go back to sign the Exodus too real fast. We're gonna let everybody go to bed except for Jim Dandy. Jim Dandy. Yeah, and get whooped. And get whooped. And get whooped. And get whooped. But I don't know who you think you is. Hmm? I ain't got nothing to do with it. I still whoop you. Exodus 2 and by verse 10. And he says, And the child grew, and she brought him under Pharaoh's daughter and became her son, and she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. He said, It came to pass in those days when Moses was grown, he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian, spying a Hebrew, one of his brethren. Now he said he was drew out of the water. So what can we take from this, to have him being drawn out of the water? What can we ascertain from that? Anybody got any general conclusion? More than that, though. Got a word to it, but what happens after baptism? What are you supposed to receive from baptism? Yeah. Exactly. So that's what it said, he's being drawn out of the water. But there's a difference. So if Moses being drawn out of the water, how does it pertain to the Lord being drawn out of the water? <laughs> Anybody know how this can pertain to the Lord being drawn out of the water? No, I'm a little bucking. What would this refer to the him being drawn out of the water if we correlated with the Lord? Because remember what it said about Joseph? Remember what he said in Zechariah when he went in the pit? What what what, what was the pit lacking? It was lacking water. So it meaning that it wasn't any life. So for him to be drawn out of the water is referring to what? Being resurrected, right? So if you got the resurrection, that means you got the spirit. But before you can get the spirit, something has to occur. Let's look at Psalms of the chapter. God, this echo is killing me, man. Yeah, it's ugly, voice now, right? No, my, the, the, my words are echoing in my own ear. Yeah, I know. You hear? You, you hear? hear ugly voice now. It matches the face. I'm just trying to let you know it matches the face. <laughs> it's not my me, but you want to play, and you married. Psalm 40. I'm to the word. You want to get all physical. That's testosterone. That ain't testosterone. You're trying to release your... How you think the Mormons start wrestling and then... Oh, man. Now you're trying to call me homosexual. Now you're trying to call me homosexual. Good grief. That's your husband. Psalm 40 and 4, actually. Matter of fact, make it verse 1. Because he said he drew Moses out of the water. And he said he did. They said, but before Moses was drawn out of the water, he said he looked up on his brothers and he seen they burden, right? Let's look at Psalm, uh, Matthew 11 first before we deal with this song story. Look at Matthew 11 first. Because a lot of y'all, I know some of y'all, you like to say you want to get the spirit and all the things of this nature. But he said you, the Lord looking upon your burdens and you ain't released them. You still trying to hold them. You're trying to take every responsibility upon yourself instead of the responsibility that he gave you, which was to follow his word. Matthew 11 and 20, 28. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. He said, and Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly and hearty, and you shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This man said his responsibility is light. Why would he say his responsibility is light? So that's what he's talking about. You know how some people say somebody's a burden. He's saying his responsibility is life. Because he said he looked upon our burdens. So what you think when he looked upon us, what burdens did he see? Yeah. Exactly. Let's look at John 1 real fast. We get to John 1, John 1. We get back to Psalm 4. John 1 and about verse, uh, about verse 14. Oh, you all right over there, Jim Dandy? John 1 and about 14. And he says, and, we, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of, only, as of the only one begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This is he of whom I spake. He that come after me is preferred before me. He was before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have we all received our grace and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Yahshua the Messiah. So when he referring to grace and truth, what is he referring to, little mother? What's the grace? What's that undeserved gift of favor? That's the spirit. So he's saying this here. Moses being came, he was drawn out of the water, and he came to look upon his brother, the burdens of his brethren. He said we're being smited by Egyptians. And that's what it said. He seen one of his brother being smited by an Egyptian. So he seen us being smited by the bondage of sin, didn't matter. 
And then he looked upon that bird and he said, I need to do something about it. Now I had just looked at it. Go to Act 7. It was Act 7. That uh I was looking for last week. Y'all hold on, because that's there. I don't know. I had called him already. But uh mm -hmm. he could, he'll call in at nine o'clock, he said. In about forty minutes. All right, y'all. Look at Act Seven. This is what I was looking for last week, or what I was telling you about. It came in my mind the other day. Act Seven, about verse thirty-four. Because it's the same thing with the Most High. What did He say in John the third chapter? He said, "For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, right, that we might not perish, right." So when we look at this here, it says, "I have seen." I have seen the affliction of my people which is in Egypt, and I've heard their groaning, and have come down to deliver them, and now come, I will send thee into Egypt. This Moses whom they refused, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. This is the same thing they said about the Lord when he came in. Who gave you this authority to do this? Who made you a ruler and a judge out of it? But you keep the key thing that he mentioned him, said that he sought Moses to be a deliverer. Then he sent Moses to deliver us from the bondage that we were in Egypt. Now we know that Yahshua was sent to deliver us through the bondage of Egypt, which is sin. And that was coming from him being what? Being drawn out of the water. You don't know about because when you receive the Spirit, what will what will what what will go away? Sin should go away. Before that, before the Spirit of the Eternal God even be able to dwell in you, shouldn't you have already put sin away? Every foul thought. Look at 2 Corinthians 7 1. Because this is something y'all, because everybody want to receive the Spirit. And that's understandable, because without it, what you just tried to tell me, I told you little mother was going to be a, a widow, you're going to be five widows. You don't know what talk about that, what you said earlier. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? But you have to look at this here. If you don't have the Spirit and you're not doing the necessary things required to receive it, you're going to be five wood. And ain't going to be no water you can get to quench it. Because a lot of y'all still got thoughts and minds to do this and do that. Or you're trying to shortcut this or shortcut that. And there's no shortcut to eternal life. You know it ain't no shortcut in natural things in life, correct? But I don't know why some of y'all think that you can shortcut your way to getting this man's spirit in you. That's just not going to happen. It's just not going to work. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Yeah, no, nah, amen. Indeed. Acts, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, what I should say. Matter of fact, look at verse 17 of the previous chapter up there so you can hear the key thing of what he's about to mention. He says, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, say of y'all, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. See, the reason why a lot of y'all not going to get the spirit and you have a problem with getting it is because you won't come out from among them and you steady touching unclean things. Because what did the Lord tell you to file? You remember some of the things the Lord told you not to file? He told you adultery, evil thoughts, blasphemies, fornications. You know what I'm talking about? Murders, evil eyes, covetousness. You got all this stuff you still got dwelling and resting in your heart, and there's no way you can be clean. Because Job told you, uh, matter of fact, look at Job. Go to Job 20, I'm say. Look what Job tell you right here. Look what Job told you. Because in Proverbs, Solomon asked who said he could make himself pure and cleanse himself from his sin. But the only way you're going to be washed from the sin is if you put on the word, eh? if you get washed by the word, right? That's the only way you're going to be able to put it away. A lot of y'all don't want to put it away. Let me see what it is. It's not Job 20. I can't remember what it is. No, right, but you can look at Job 19, though. Or 17, actually, in verse 9. Look at Job 17 and 9. He said, The righteous shall hold on his way, and he that have clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. We know the Lord had clean hands, didn't he? He waxed stronger and stronger in the spirit every day, didn't he? The reason why some of y'all can't wax stronger and stronger in the word is because you won't clean your hands. Because the man told you to come out and be separate and don't touch the unclean thing. Don't you know if you got, he said, if you got clean hands, I mean, you ain't touching nothing to file this. Mm -hmm. See, some of y'all still grabbing stuff that the file. So he can't draw you out of the water like he did with Moses. With, like the name that Moses named me. But these niggas think that Moses' name just mean he was drawn out of water because they put him in a, bu in a little bush and he floated down the Nile River. You know what I'm talking about? But we know the Lord was drawn out of water too then. Because he said, I put you in a pit where there is no water. But when he rose from the dead, then he draw him out some water then. Because he gave him life. Now we're looking to be drawn out that same water which is in him. Because what did he tell the lady at the well? You remember what he told the lady at the well? 
He, he said, he said straight up, he told the lady at the well, if you drink this water, which I have, you'll never thirst. He said it'll be a well springing up under you in the everlasting light. And what he told him. So that would mean you would be drawn out of the water. That's what you go get out of a well. Eh? That's the same thing going back to uh, with Jacob. What? When he said this is Jacob's well, that's what she was referring to. Because they were drawing water out of the well. Again, showing you this here. This man coming up out of here, drawing this water out. And a lot of everybody wants the spirit, don't they? You know what I'm talking about? At least I would hope. Some people, I, I'm kind of skeptical. I don't really think they want it. You know what I'm talking about? I don't even, or they, you know, as I've told some of y'all in the past, everybody swear they got it already, or they being led by it. That's Hebrews' favorite word. We know what Sunday people do. You can show us anything. You want to show us? No, no, no. You show sure? me? Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, I'm just, just no, no. I mean, because I know you've seen it before. Yeah, it was hilarious. Man, I mean, we just stayed like on there. Guess what? I seen it one time a lady did it. It was the most humorous thing I ever seen. Huh? I said, we want church for entertainment. I'm Honestly, be getting down. Honestly <laughs> you got you got black folks go to church on Sunday, think get the spirit of doing a two step and, and and gibbering and running all around the building looking like a plaque dumb fool. Literally running around the building. You know what I'm saying? You got Hebrews. Because I'm gonna tell you this here. Literally. I know it's getting a little bit off topic. I'm gonna tell you this here. Somebody asked somebody that rolled up, hey, why you change your Hebrew name back to your regular name? You know what I'm talking about? Individual told him, Hey, if you wanna know why I did it, talk to this guy. And he can tell you. You know what I'm talking about? Because obviously this is a woman. I can't tell you. You know what I'm talking about? Nigga gets upset. Why you just can't give me a scripture? Give me scriptures, not teaching. This, that, there, and the other. All this nigga, the first thing nigga said, well, well, check this out. Because this was a conversation that started like 11 o'clock in the morning. This nigga come back like 6, 7 o'clock at night. Steady going. Because he want to know, hey, like this here. So I say, hey, man, you could have been called because... If you really, if you really want to know something, somebody say, "Hey, you want to talk about it?" He go my number, call me. When you call, if you really want to know, you know what I'm talking about. But what I told you about people online, what they like to do. What I told you they like to do. You know what I'm saying? But what would they refer to do? Tap, tap, oh, yeah. tap, 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 tap. See, if you's a man, you go like this here. Men talk to each other, don't you? Would hope. Wouldn't you say that? You know what I'm saying? If, it's like this here. If I want to know something about cooking some beans, I'm not going to text little muffin about cooking no beans. I'm going to call and say, hey, can you explain this to me? Because I need to know this information. You know what I'm saying? Because you can tell some things can get lost in translation when you type something. Would you agree with that? You know what I'm talking about? I've seen it happen on Facebook too many times where dudes really be on the same type time, but you, you know what I'm talking about? Dudes can take this the wrong way. Grown men don't want to talk to each other. But the whole point of what I'm talking about is cause patients say, I don't need no teacher. Just give me the scripture so I can get my understanding. Well, you already scarred right now. See, that's what nigga say. He led by the spirit. Then when you ask him, well, look here, buddy. How did you get that? How did you get that? Because you telling me, would you think somebody had a spirit would look another man in the face and tell him, I don't need to be talked by nobody. Not saying, I didn't heard what you had to say and I'm not going to be talked by you. You know what I'm talking about? Because nigga, you are dumb. You know what I'm talking about? Nigga say, I don't need to be talked. You already in trouble. Because nobody with the spirit would even say that now. You know what I'm talking about? It was it was situations where have you read when 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 Peter did something wrong? Paul sat down and straightened him. Did Peter say anything to him? I don't have to listen to you. Is that what he told me? He ain't telling that. You know what I'm talking about? These men had disagreements on matter, but they could still sit down and talk to one another. Even Paul and Barnabas had a disagreement so serious they had to part ways. But it wasn't no serious when they were walking and they couldn't learn from one another. That's a bad mind frame of thinking. Because they say rebuke a wise man and he'll get even wiser one. If you see a man got wisdom along the same lines that you had, you were hearken to him. You were hearken to him. Even when he sat down with his disciples on the time the Lord got on the disciple when they were doing stupid stuff or, or, or not paying attention. You know what I'm talking about? Remember how Nell used to get, like you said, I used to get on her and say stuff to her like the Lord said to the disciples because I feel like you know better. Not just because you know better as far as you don't know what you're doing, but I got more faith in your ability that you might have in yourself to remember certain things or to know certain things. You understand what I'm saying? Like it's certain things I know y'all might forget over time, but I got confidence in your ability that you should know. You know what I'm talking about? Not to just all oh, ride on you, but I think you should know that. Because I actually feel like some of y'all are here. Like y'all, I know y'all young though, y'all got a lot of stuff going on and some things forget. Then, you know, some things we done went over from a long time ago and you don't remember everything. Is that accurate to say? You know what I'm talking about? But at the same time, when I be asking y'all certain stuff, you can tell that I feel like you should know. Not just because. I'm trying to be mean, but I feel like you should know just because it should just pop in your mind. I know y'all read on your own time. You know what I'm talking about? I wait till y'all look at videos uh, from the other assembly on, on your spare time from time to time. I know you can recall certain things we done went over in the townhouse 
or just by ourselves, even with you, I'm probably back to Jason's house. You know what I'm talking about? I put from time to time, you probably hawking back and stuff. That's why I ask y'all certain things, because you know, I want to make sure you know. Because I, be, I believe that you know. You know, I used to be on there all the time about some of that stuff. She used to be thinking, I don't be on her hard about what she was doing. But some things I wanted to come on to her own conclusion. You know what I'm talking about? But I felt like, hey, you know. You be around me every day. You should know. You know what I'm talking about? Most of these dudes, they don't be wanting to know. Because they ain't drawn out no water. How you going to be drawn out the water? How the grown man just tell me that it's impossible to stop singing? The man said it's impossible. Most asinine thing I ever heard. That's the dude I told you. He said he fellowship by himself. <laughs> He said, that's why I fellowship alone. But what you need to have a, uh, the fellowship, little mother, what you need? You need a fellow. Because when you ain't fellowshipping alone, you know what you're pretty much doing. What nasty young teenage boys do when ain't nobody to the house. Remember what Chris Rock said, you looking around, you, you, you basically just masturbating. Because you know what the Lord said in Matthew 18, right? He said, well, how many people gathered in his name, him and this? So if you by yourself, you ain't got no fellowship there. Lord ain't with you. Nevertheless, let's go back to the second Corinthians. This man told you. But that's why a lot of y'all can't get right. Because you steady touching an unclean thing. If you want to get stronger and stronger, clean your hands. Get that filth off them. Get them. Ain't none of y'all going to stick your hands in mud and keep them like that, is it? You're going to go wash them off. But a lot of y'all still sticking your hands in sin and messing with stuff and thought processes and ways and doings and things you ain't got no business. Then you don't want to wash your hands. You want to pretend like your hands clean. You like one of them nasty niggas don't wipe it behind, but you don't use no toilet paper. Whole hand smell like poop. You shaking the hand. That's you right now. That's you. Yeah, I know it. Now I got germs and all this type of stuff on my hands. No, you germs and feces. Verse 18. Pink eye. Pink eye. And he said, We'll be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters. Say, y'all almighty. Now look what he said here in 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Hold on. That's good. He said, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting co-deathness and the fear of God. If you know this promise this man got eternal life for you and a kingdom, wouldn't it make sense for you to cleanse yourself from all filth of the spirit and the flesh? Not only just that, that means wash your bum, but also, well, hold on, look at look at James the third chapter. God knows a couple on here, a couple of y'all got a problem with y'all mouth. James 3 and about verse 5. Make it verse 4. Make it 3, I think. Now I've got to look at verse 2. James 3 and 2. See, when you see this part this part right here, see, this is what niggas think that you can still keep on sin. I'll show you how dumb niggas is. He say, for in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. And able also to bridle the whole body. This man said you can offend in a lot of things. Then did he say that you were gonna keep sinning, or he said you can offend in a lot of things? But then he just told you if you don't offend nobody with your mouth, he said, boy, you can keep you a perfect man because you can keep your whole body under control. See, some of y'all need to learn to keep your whole mouth, your mouth under control. Because obviously, if you can't keep your mouth under control, you think you keep your body under control? Because the mouth is a hard thing to keep under control. Somebody get under the skin, you'll take off in a heartbeat. That man said, if you are able not to offend anybody in word, he said, you're a perfect man. How many people did the Lord offend in word? Other than just telling them the truth. Nobody. He knew how to keep his mouth under wrap. That's why I go back and remember when we showed you when they said, hey, I kept my peace because you did. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you got to remember when people are trying you or sizing you or getting you upset, you don't have to respond. You don't have to respond. Also, this son, I done told some of y'all several times. I know I told you this a lot when you was a little, little child. When you know somebody, how somebody's going to react, what should you do? Should you get upset with somebody when you know what they're going to do before they do it? Because when you get upset with them and take off on them when you know what they're going to do before they do it, what does that say about you? They say you're a big old dumb man. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, huh? I told you that since you was a child. Because when you know what somebody is going to do before they do it, and you know that certain people know how to aggravate you, irk you or do certain things to get up under your skin. Remember I used to tell Nell this all the time. You don't feed their sickness because then you're giving your power away. See it's one thing you've always probably heard before. He say if two people argue and you got two fools. But if you walk away and let that person argue by themselves you got one fool. You know what I'm talking about? Sometimes you got to learn it. You ain't got to fight that battle. You ain't got to straighten everybody. You know what I'm talking about? But especially more so when you know. I know somebody at your job irk your lab nerd, just nigga just flat out stupid. You know what I'm talking about? Really don't know what they're doing. Then again, you might not. 
You know what I'm talking about? I mean, like, my type of job. Oh, you work dolo. Yeah, you, you mainly like yourself. Yeah, so you work dolo. Like you know what I'm talking about? But I'm just saying this period. But it was at all morning. I imagine. Quite a few. Because you had to work with these yeah. things. Because you can lie about everything. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and see, the thing is, is, is you have to be able to keep your mouth under control. No matter how upset somebody gets you, does not mean that you have to cuss them out. That doesn't mean you have to disrespect them. That doesn't mean you have to say things out the way. Because that shows a total lack of maturity. You know what I'm talking about? You don't have to do that. Because you know some people be just looking for the, the time to be able to say something, to cut somebody with their word. But we know what that is. That's the spitefulness and maliciousness. That's unrighteous. Books say you ought to die. You know what I'm talking about? Books say you ought to die. We don't see no man of God or no woman of God, no one in the book using words to clamp nobody door. No matter what people did to him. You know what I'm saying? See, that's, it. that's it. That's it. The best way you want to cut somebody down is, is live righteously. But that man said, y'all got I want y'all to remember that now. If you can control your mouth, this man said he's a perfect man. This man said, if you don't offend in word, you are a perfect man and you can bridle or bring in your whole. Because what did the Lord just tell him when we looked at in Matthew 11? He said, take his yoke upon him then. That means take his bridle upon him. That means restrict your behavior. Not just what you do, but your mouth too. Because he just told you his burden is light. He said it's a light thing to do these things. A lot of y'all don't be really want to take the suffering and persecution that come along with the word. A lot of y'all don't understand that sinners are going to be sinners and their job is to provoke you. What did all them sinners do to the Lord the whole time he was walking? They provoked him, did What did all the men in the wilderness who hated God do to Moses? What did they do the whole time they were? They provoked him, then? And he didn't snap nor go off on these people at any time. So you have to look at the examples of the people that came before you and, and walk in it and abide in it. Look what else he said. He said, Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. This is the whole thing. The Lord got to put bricks in our mouth. See, a lot of y'all don't want to bring every thought into the obedience of the captivity of the Messiah because you still want to direct the way. You still want to direct the way. The man told you to turn. Hold on, look at Hosea 10. Look what he told you to do. We get back. I know we got to go back to Psalms 40, correct? Oh, yeah, that's another spot, but I ain't called it yet. Oh, oh, we good with Job. I couldn't remember what it's. I'm thinking it's Job 25. That's coming to my mind right now. Let me see if that's the case. When we get this whole say 10 to 13. See, look what he told you in, in Job, whole say 10 and 13. Matter of fact, make it verse 12. He says, sow to yourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy and break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek y'all till he come and rain righteousness mm -hmm. upon you. For you to get drawn out the water, you need to break up all them sins you got in your heart. You need to break up the things that's got in your heart and sow righteousness. If you want this man to rain his water on you to be drawn out this water, a lot of y'all don't want to do it. He said, you've plowed wickedness, you've reaped iniquity. He said, you've been working wickedness, you've got back to our lawlessness. You're getting back there. Say so your crops can't grow without no water. Look what else he said. He said, you eat the fruit alive because thou did trust in thy way the multitude of thy mighty men. That's the problem. See, that's where the problem come in at. Because you don't want this man to put his bricks in, his, in your mouth. You don't want this man to direct where you're going. You don't want that man to do it. You want to try to direct your way and still say that he you going in his way. Because what he say? He said, he that hold on his way then. Get stronger and stronger. See, a lot of y'all want to hold on his way. You want to go this way when he's telling you to go right. You want to go left. When he's telling you to go north, you're trying to go south. It ain't going to work that way. Let me look check Job 25, because that really came to mind. That might be exactly what I want. It might be verse 4. And it is. Thank the Lord. Job 25 and 4. I thank the Lord for that. That's exactly what I want. I said Job. Job. Job, I'm sorry. Job 25 and 4. With the B or? Yeah, with the B. Suffering Job. A homeboy. Who was showing the, uh, the manifestation of the Lord. Oh, just Job, J O B. Yeah, I'm saying that's how you tell the difference. Joel. Oh yeah, when I say Joel, I'm gonna I say Joel because I gotta accent, accentuate the L. Mm -hmm. Make sure. L. Look what he tell you right here in verse 25. He said, "How then can man be justified with God, or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? How can this happen? How can a man be justified with God and be clean of that's born of a woman? Anybody know? Anybody know? Don't be scared to answer that. Do you know no one? Hmm? Exactly. But he said, how can you be justified with God? And he said, how can you be clean if you're born of a woman? See, let's look at Galatians 4. Let's see what he talked about being born of a woman. We come back to James 3, and we'll see how we'll be justified with God. Lord willing, he'll work all this in together to his glory. Galatians 4. 
and about verse 1. Because he said, how are you going to be clean that's born of a woman? Because what happened when you're born of a woman? No, you got on, remember when we dealt with change your filthy garments? You got this flesh on. So we know we have to do what? Not only change the filth, we got to put this off and put something else on for us in order to be clean. You remember when we dealt with that? I know that was a while ago. We didn't really. Remember when we were looking at Joshua and he said he had these filthy garments on. He said, give him a change of clothes. So for us to be able to be clean that's born of a woman, that means we got this carnal body on. So we have to do something. But let's look at Galatians 4. Look what he said. He said, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differ nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. He said, even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. So now he see. Now he said, we under, the, remember, we're going right back to what we're talking about with Moses. we under captivity to the things of the world. Because one, at one time, then we all served diverse lusts. And doing all things, we were under bondage to that. We were captive to that. But remember, Moses was to be what? Showing the so forth of what the Lord was going to be. A judge and a what else? A deliverer. You know what I'm talking about? That's what he was showing forth. When he's showing him, uh, he's going to be, his name is Moses. He was drawn out of the water. And then he looked upon the burdens of his people. And he said, my people are captive to sin. I need to free them. And when I came to free them from sin, what did they do? They rejected me. You see what I'm talking about? You see the correlation between the two? Because remember, we dealt with it differently the first time. You know what I'm talking about? But see, the Lord got us coming back for you to see it in a different angle this time. Because remember, we didn't deal with what Moses' name meant. You know what I'm talking about? But you see, he said his name is drawn out of the water. So for us to be able to be drawn out of the water, that means we're made clean, correct? And then when we're made clean, we're free from bondage. Because he looked and he seen that we were suffering because of our sin. It's going right back to what he said. I didn't send my son to condemn the world. I sent him to save it. That all men might have life through him. Look what else he said. He said, uh, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So he sent us the cleansers to bring us to him. So for us to receive the adoption of sons, what's got to happen? And he said, because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So therefore, he's going to be able to cleanse you by what? Let's look at John 15 and let's see what it is. John 15 and 4. Let's see what the Lord says. Huh, y'all all right back there? I know y'all got y'all mutes on. John 15 and 3, actually. I know these boys are going ham tonight. And they Bible groups going ham. Look what he said. He said, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. He said, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. What causes, uh, if he the vine and he the tree, and we the branches of the tree, what causes the branches to grow? What causes fruit to come upon the tree? What has to happen? Water. water has to come upon it to water the tree, don't it? Because what do trees do? When the water hits the ground, what does the root of the tree do? It sucks the water up. You know what I'm talking about? So he's sitting there telling you, you clean from this word that I've spoken to you. Because remember what he told you in the law. He told you in Psalm 19, Psalm 119 and verse 9, that he said, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to thy word. Didn't he say, I'm going to send forth a prophet like unto Moses and him you're going to have to hear? He said, you're going to have to hear him. See, the problem is a lot of y'all don't want to hear. You want to find a way to do this? You want to find a way to do that? You want to find a way to get your way to line up with his way? Or when things don't go your way, you get upset with him because you want things to go the way you want them to go. So none of us had a mind to sit back and say what the Lord said before they came to kill him. What did he say before they came to kill him, little mother? Amen. That's what you got to have in mind is it's not my will be done, but thy will be done. Because a lot of y'all deal with the fact that if the Lord, if you wanted something to occur and that wasn't the Lord's will, could you take it? Could you accept it? Could you bite that bullet? Because a lot of us want things to go how we want it to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? That's why you can't be drawn out of the water. That's what's hindering a lot of y'all from even receiving the Spirit, because you want things to go how you want them to go, because you don't want the man bitten bridles in your mouth. You want to ride the way. Whenever you ever seen a donkey or a horse tell a jockey where it's going, you know what they do with horses in horse races that don't take heed to the jockey? Put them down. They put him down. They kill him. They don't do but one or two things. They either make him a stud, and if they can't do that with him, they kill him. Because you can't make me no money. Celebrate. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, boy, don't say sell on the Burger King. Somebody I know just went to Burger King the other day. Got him a fat walker, too. Hey, that's enough. 
Have they seen the study? No, <laughs> they were fine because it wasn't for them. You know what I'm talking about? But check this out, though. But you see that there, though? You think a horse race, uh, uh, owner, owner of a racehorse is going to put up with a horse that won't take instruction? So we have to sit there. Why do you think the Lord? The Lord ain't, ain't going to suffer us but for so long. We just dealt with it. He ain't going to suffer you for so long. Go ahead and let the man put Britain bridles in your mouth. But then he said, how can you be justified with God? Because we've seen how a man can be made clean from a woman. Matter of fact, look at Romans 6. And then we'll show you how, how you're going to be justified with God. Anybody got any general idea how they're going to be justified with God? We done dealt with it before. It's been a long time. Brittany, you should know. You just looked at it. Huh? Hold on. Well, what is that? What is righteousness? Well, there you go. Okay, what would I just say? Look at Romans 6. Let me see what verse it is out there. Look at verse 9. He said, Knowing that the Messiah being raised from the dead die no more, death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lived, he lived unto God. Likewise, reckon ye you're, you're also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, and be alive unto God through Yahshua the Messiah our Lord. And let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. That's going right back to putting them bridles in your mouth and, and coming under this man and let him give you some rest. Instead of steady thinking on what your flesh wants and why I can't do this and why I can't do that and I want to do this and I want to do that. This after a time period you got to deal with this here. How long are you going to let your carnal mind live? How long are you going to let it live? Because what have I told you before, little mother? You dying is contingent on what? The speed of you dying to be able to receive the spirit and cease from sin is contingent on what? It's contingent on you. It's contingent on you, is it not? It's, on, it's how bad and desperately and how hungry you are is for it. Because remember, Job said, I hunger for your word, what? More than my necessary food. So it depends on how bad you want it. Because when we sit back and we look at everything else in life and when we wanted something badly, we was able to make that happen and make it happen quickly if we wanted it bad enough. So if you want the spirit bad enough, if you want to be drawn out of the water bad enough, if you want eternal life bad enough, if you want to cease from sin and wonder when you're going to die to your flesh, it's all on you. You hold the knife, don't you? Didn't he say mortify your members? So that's on you. That's on you. Can't nobody, there's no timetable you can put on something that relates to you. You know what I'm talking about? Did I put a timetable on how? I wonder how long it's going to take me to put on 15 pounds of muscle. I just noticed here, I get in here and grind. I put it on. You know what I'm talking about? You got to put in here, you want to be saved, you want to stop sinning, you want to be drawn out of the water. Handle your business. Just don't make excuses for stuff. You know what I'm talking about? Don't come up with a way to say, well, like I always see niggas be put, want to be posted and it's really escape. I'm a work in progress. You ever seen people say that on here? Post, nigga post that on my page all the time. I'm a work in progress. No, you just a sinner just making excuses trying to hold on just as long as you can. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't no sense to sit there. I bet not never hear now. One of you niggas tell somebody, God ain't finished with me yet. I'm a work in progress. Man, I might come and karate chop all you niggas. Because that ain't even nothing usually. Does that even sound like something a righteous man would say? I'm a work in progress. That doesn't even make any sense to even fix that out your mind. If you ain't no work in progress, you know what you need to stop doing? Stop doing it. You know what I'm talking about? How hard is that? You know what I'm talking about? Like straight up. You know this simple like If you know something you're doing is killing you, you're going to keep doing it. You know this is killing you. And you're going to keep doing it. And then come up with reasons to excuse yourself for continuing to kill yourself. Everybody who done seen somebody who smoked tobacco done came. Very few people be like, yeah, I know this is horrible for my health. I really need to stop. How many people really just look somebody in the face and say that? Most people tell them, I got to die sometime. What? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Pretty much anyone who's ever smoked tobacco has said mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? I got to, anything to excuse that I'm doing something that's killing me. I go sometime. Alcoholics do it. Drug addicts do it. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody that has a pattern of destructive behavior will come up with any means of fashion to, to excuse their destructive behavior so they continue doing it. Instead of saying, you know what? I really need to stop doing it and I know it. You know what I'm talking about? And I just really need to make it happen. You know what I'm talking about? That's more that's more that's that's more mature and adult like fashion to do something. Because before you can get rid of a problem, you must acknowledge it first. 
You can't get rid of a problem that you do not acknowledge. Sweeping it under the rug, making excuses for it, that's not going to happen. That's why you're not going to get a spirit. That's why you're going to end up being firewood. That's why it's going to be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because the stuff you still want to say, you still want to do, you still want to go, people you want to talk to, people you want to hang with, people you want in your life, who God's in there telling you, I'm showing you this nigga hate me. But you say you love me. But yet you want to cleave to people who hate me. And then these people who hate me, they're going to end up tempting you. And then you're going to end up doing something you ain't got no business. And then they're going to blaspheme me because of you. You know what I'm talking about? When well, you should have just did what? Just like they do with the umbilical cord. What do they do? They cut it. Cut the ties. Don't mean you don't got to have, you know what I'm talking about, be rude and nasty to people. But you need to realize that. Just going to cut the tie. They're not going to be a, they not going to be a help to you. He told us that in, in, in the book of Judges, didn't he? He said, I'm going to leave all. Look at it. Go back. Look at Judges too. Look at Judges too. See, this is what happened to a lot of y'all. And why y'all be stumbling and you can't get rid of stuff. Judges 2 and 1. Judges 2 and 1. And he said, the angel of y'all came up from Gilgal to Bochim. And said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you into the land, which I swear unto your father. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Now, see, this pertains to the Lord. Because we know Gilgal, looking back at Joshua, that means rolling. He rolled the sin away. You know what I'm talking about? And he said, I brought you up out of sin. He said, I rolled sin away and brought you out of bondage and captivity. Because when he rolled that, that rock away, talking about the sin, that means they were circumcised in the heart. Which means they received, they should have received the spirit. Then what do you say? And he said, he said, they said, I remember we dealt with that in Joshua 5 about them coming in the land that had never run out of uh, run out of fruit. Say the manna ceased. Wasn't no need for keep giving you the word when you got the fruit of the tree of life right here. You know what I'm talking about? So you have to sit there and look at it and what he's telling you. And then he sat there and told him, he said, I brought you in the land. He said, I'll never break my covenant. Because he son his son to be an everlasting covenant, an everlasting covenant of righteousness. But look what else he said. He's saying, you shall make no league with the inhabitants of the land. You shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? This man said, why are you making league with these sinners? Then we just read the man tell you come out from among them. Look at what he said again. He said, you shall make no league with the inhabitants of the land. Make no league with them. You know what that means what, when he said don't make no league with them? Don't mess with them. He said, but you have not done what I told you. He asked you, why did you do it? So we're going to ask y'all the same thing. The man told you don't make no league with no sinners. Why ain't you did what he told you to do? Why you ain't did what he told you to do? You still messing with these people. And you wonder why you can't get right. Because the man told you don't mess with them. Look what else he said. He said, wherefore I also said I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their God shall be a snare to you. So these idols that these people got in your heart that y'all holding to, that man said they're going to be a thorn in your side. They're going to stand and be pricking you. And they say they're going to be a trap to you. They're going to take you down. What that one? That was verse 4, if I'm not mistaken. Verse 3, actually. Verse 2? Yes, sir. That, he said that's going to take you down. Have y'all ever noticed that there when you're messing with people who you ain't got no bit of, don't they be thorns on your side? You ever had somebody who was a thorn on your side? Mm -hmm. mm, I know I know most of y'all. Somebody that's a thorn on your side is just always there pricking you to try to get you to do something you know you ain't got no bit of doing. And you know that they mean you no good. And they steady come around trying to prick at you. You know what I'm talking about? Like you said in Proverbs 1, if sinners entice thee, don't what? Don't consent to them. You know what I'm talking about? People that's coming, oh, it ain't a big deal if you do this. It ain't a big deal. And you know this is a thorn in your side. And if you know that they try to get you to do stuff you ain't got no bit of, what he said, it's going to be a trap. He said, hey, God's going to be a snare to you. It's going to be a trap to you. Like, you haven't seen a bear trap. It's something, it's something that's set up, or a mouse trap. It's something set up the way it don't look like it's, it's going to really do you no damage. It's deceptive. But once they get hold to you, you're done. You know what I'm talking about? So you have to sit and look at that in the dealings of people that you're messing with. That's why we're going back to this James 3. Go back to this James 3. That goes right back to dealing with people when you're speaking with your tongue. That's why he say don't let sin reign in your mortal body. Once you done died to sin, you need to die to everything. Listen to what the man told you. The man said, I told you don't mess with these people. Why are you fooling with them? He said, I told you not to do it. He said, why you ain't listening to what I said? Is that Did I say that or did he say that? Because he just said, why have you done this? And he said, I told you, don't make no league with these people. You steady want to do it because you think you're smarter than him. Why is you going to walk around here thinking you're smarter than God? Like if this man don't know what you're thinking. Like this man don't know what you're thinking. Man told you in Ezekiel, I know every thought that entered into your mind, O house of Israel. Every single last one of them. Then the Lord sit back and say, I can perceive their thoughts. People ain't even said a word. I know what's going on in your heart, boy. What that's letting you know? 
Thank the Lord. I will let you know again he was God then. Because he said that in Ezekiel. I know every thought come in your mind. He sat there right in front of them people and let them know, I perceive your thoughts. He said, why you perceive wickedness? It don't make no sense to try to be smarter than God. Why would you do that? And if you wonder why you're steady falling on your face and crashing and things ain't going in the direction you want them to go. Because you think you're smarter than him. So he got to show you who real smart. It's like what I told you with Chris Rock said. You the smarty art nigga, huh? You the smarty art nigga, huh? Well, the most high looking at you, let me ask you this. Let me ask, can you whoop me? Because he said, if he said, if a man fall in my hand, who can deliver him out of it? Y'all got to sit there and think about that. How much you fear God that you fear that I don't want to fall in his hand? Remember what David said? David said, I'd rather fall in the Lord's hand than man's hand because the Lord might have mercy. You know what I'm talking about? But guess what, though? You keep trying that, man. You might not get no mercy. We just had this conversation. We just dealt with it about a month or so ago. Somebody, uh, Dwight, knows sitting there talking about, why am I scared of getting crashed across my head? Stop sinning. It's time for y'all be going through something. You ain't even going through nothing for righteousness sake. You get whooped for the stuff you're doing. And be, and be quick to scream what? Lord, why I'm going through this? What? Why I'm going through this? Look here. I suffer for righteousness sake. You ever heard me complain no more? Took it like a soldier did it, because I already know what the book said. You're going to suffer either way. It's better for suffering for doing good than to be suffering for doing stuff you ain't got no business. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of y'all get whooped for doing stuff you ain't got no business, and you revert right back to like you was when you was a little child. You steady trying to buck. Man, steady whooping. Steady trying to put that uh, that bridle in your mouth. Or what? I don't know what they call it. The regular way what they call it. You know what they call it? A muzzle. That's not what they call it when they put that on the, on the horse. Is it? No. Mm -hmm. No. A uh, yoke. Well, yeah, yoke. It all works. Either way, he's steady trying to put the yoke on you and tell you, y'all mule, and to go in the direction. You steady trying to buck. Steady trying to kick. You don't make no sense. Go back to James the third. This don't make no sense. After a while, you don't get tired of bucking. We already heard last week. What happened if you bought too long? Yeah. Why? You out of here. You know what I'm saying? Look what he say here in verse 5. James the third chapter in the fifth verse. He say, even so, Oh, we in verse 4, actually. He said, Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whatsoever the governor listed. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. And the tongue is fire, a world of iniquity. And so is the tongue amongst our members, that it defiled the whole body, and set on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. That man say, your mouth alone can get you something to hell. Say it's the smallest member on your body. You know what I'm talking about? He said, but it called the most damage. It could call the most damage. A lot of y'all don't even consider. A lot of y'all just be ready to take off on somebody. They done made me mad. I'm going to say something. You know what I'm talking about? That's why I told you what we told you a couple weeks ago. Y'all be quick to want to tell other people, oh, y'all going to hell. But make sure you ain't, you, you may make sure you draw it out the water before you open your mouth and say that. Don't get amped up because you're learning something people ain't learning or hearing things other people ain't hearing. And then you feeling it all good about yourself. You can't even control your mouth. What else is say? You all right? No more. Verse 7. He said, every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed. And I've been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is unruly, evil, and full of deadly poison. How else the only way you're going to be able to tame your tongue is if you obey the word. Because don't get me wrong now. People are going to get under your skin. It's going to happen from time to time. People are going to upset you. You know what I'm talking about? That's going to happen. But the only thing you can govern is what? Your response to it. That's the only thing you can govern. You know what people, you tell people sometimes, because you know people who speak first and think later. So you need to think before you speak. You also need to don't wear your emotions on your sleeve. People can read your body language and see it in your eyes. And if somebody really done agitated you to that point where you feel like you were snapping that fashion, wouldn't the adult thing be to let them know, hey, man, this thing that you're doing right now is really bothering me. You know what I'm talking about? What you're doing or what you're saying, I really don't appreciate. And you let that be known. Maybe that person can correct that behavior. Don't you know that would take them aback if you let them know? I really don't like appreciate how you're speaking to me right now. I really don't appreciate what you just did. And that's really irking me. And I would really wish... And desire that you would cease from doing it. Don't you think that would take all the power away from them right now? You think anybody would be expecting you to respond back in that response? So guess what I do? That take them aback. They're not gonna know what to say. They're not gonna know what to do. And then if you see that, okay, once you let that be known, that hey man, the activity or the speech or whatever you're doing is really getting on my nerves. 
and I really don't like it, and I would wish that you would cease and desist, and they continue on doing it, then you know what the next thing you have to do? You extricate yourself from the situation. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, guess what? I let that be known. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. I'm not going to. You good. You can have it all by yourself. You ever seen a stupid nigga sit there and argue and nigga walk away from it? <laughs> I'm talking about, like, straight up. <laughs> Just leave a nigga out. <laughs> Screw you, nigga. Like this here nigga look around. Who is that nigga talking to? <laughs> nigga been left. Because what do they tell you? They tell you when it comes to fight, Just walk away. You know what I'm saying? But see, a lot of times people don't want to seem to be weak or seem to be no coward. But at the end of the day, no, that nigga going to end up being a fool because he's going to be sitting there all mad, all by himself, and you're going to walk off. Because you know what the bulls say? Anger rests in the bosom of fools. I pray not to any of you are fools. Because the bulls say you what? Be angry, but sin not. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. We still in this body. People still going to get you mad from time to time. But you govern your response to it. You know what I'm talking about? You ain't got to go off. I told you, you was there a little month when we was downtown, wasn't you? You remember how that dude was talking to me that day? You know what I'm talking about? That nigga with them glasses. I'm talking about that in my mind, I say, boy, if that nigga flinched wrong, I'm going to punch this nigga in his mouth. Because, boy, I'm a grown man. You ain't got to talk to me like that. And I asked you nicely, too. I said, bro, don't talk to me like that. You know what I'm saying? I said, don't talk to me like that, bro. You ain't got to cuss me out like that. Nigga, I talk to you anyway. I want to talk to you. I said, come on, man. We all grown men here, man. I'm talking about you got to call me all these names. Cussing me all this here. I ain't spoken to you like that one time, bro. Why are you talking to me like that? You know what I'm saying? I already don't like your homeboy standing down here. If I was still in the world, I'd have punched him in the mouth on general principle. That nigga with them black nigga with them waves. Why well, I want to hit that nigga in his mouth? I ain't like the stuff he was saying out of his mouth. I'm talking about this blaspheme like the day alone. That's why I wanted to hit him. I didn't like his attitude. He was smug and you stupid. I hate a smug, stupid nigga. It's one thing if you smug and you know what you're talking about. At least you got something for your arrogance. You know what I'm talking about? But when you dumb and you small, oh my. I ain't gonna lie. I want to hit Carl Square. I want to knock them glasses three feet off his face. I'm talking about JSO. We're gonna have to come get me out of him and plow. Dump you up. Oh, he would have had, he'd have had to bring it to him. He'd have had to bring it to him. Oh, he'd have had to bring it to him. One thing for certain, nigga. I know I had somebody out there who would have helped me. Cause they got that they would have got down, nigga. We'd have been boxing together. Watch this here. Boop, 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 boop. You got dirt too, nigga. Who? Right, me and Nell would have ran a dime on them nigga. Just me and Nell. <laughs> Just me and Nell. Cause we know Joe so I wasn't gonna fight with him. So we already know. Me and Nell gonna run a dime. Straight up. We gonna get off of you, nigga. Who? My nigga from out east, nigga. We gonna get it in. Oh. You ain't like you from the out east, nigga. Them niggas ain't from out east, niggas ain't even from here. That's even worse. They might be from uh, all. Oh, okay. where they from? They might be from all. Uh, they, they were going to be from footing your bum corner, <laughs> nigga. That's where they were going to be from. You know what I'm talking about? She hadn't been fully converted yet. She would have scrapped. Yeah. You got dumb. Who? No, she's Baby. She's a spicy one. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I hear you talking. Ain't nobody going to put their hands on my nail. There is no fight that she had lost. Mm -hmm. She was going places just to go yeah, find her. Yeah, she yeah she that's her reputation. This is no, she will fight men, too. Uh, they must have been sorry. Must have been sisters. I don't know who they were, but I'm sitting here telling you, cause like this here. But I kept myself under control. You know what I'm saying? And do and I thank the Lord. Cause dudes was like, "Boy, I like how you handled yourself with that brother, man." He was talking to you in the kind of way, and he said you didn't do that there. And guess what happened? Men was able more than likely to sit down and harken to what I had to say. Cause they like you getting loud. Yeah, I'm getting loud. Cause this nigga's stupid. But I ain't disrespecting him now, time. Like you said, somebody cussing you out and disrespecting you to your face, your natural inclination, you're going to want to do that back to him, man. Mm -hmm. That's your natural inclination. What? You know what I'm talking about? After my car was getting greasy. I'm talking about, if you nigga, this nigga, this. I'm like, okay. I said, this nigga flinch on. I'm telling you. I'm going to hit him in his mouth. He ain't going to get a tent to move. I'm talking about just a body language, just too close to my personal space. He was hitting the jaw. You know what I'm talking about? Straight up. That nigga could have just been reaching to grab a place card. Boop. And I don't even fight, Carl. You just gotta dumb it. Okay, well, play with it. Play with it. Nigga, play. had you sleep in him, flowers, nigga. <laughs> okay. Okay. You was looking like one of the bones out there. Okay, you play with it. You play with it. Guess what? It was four of them out there, and I'd have whooped all four. Cause I know cows when I see one. A cow would have already know you was a cow because when a, a man, when a man look you in your face, man to man. Mm -hmm. And say, look here, bro, you ain't got to talk to me like that. We both men. You know, that's what really irked me and drew my eye. You told me, I ain't got to respect you, nigga. So you tell the base, tell me I ain't no man yet. That's what you telling me? That's what you telling me? Because last time I checked, 
I got uh, uh what is it? Ed chromosome? Last time I checked. Last time I checked, I got to stand up to urinate. You know what I'm talking about? That <laughs> last time I checked. Last time I checked, well, I slept around killers and gangsters and niggas respected me because I stood as a man. Now I walk around here talking about I'll whoop a nigga or oh, all this, none of this here. And he say, hey, that's a man of respect. Get that man his respect. Because he giving me my respect. He carries himself as a man. He respect everybody as a man. Respect him as a man. I'm asking you as a man, bro, don't talk to me like that. You know what I'm talking about? Because he screwed up. <laughs> I ain't got to respect you. He said, I said, come on. He said, you ain't none of my brother. I said, you know what? That's the first time you told the truth all day. I'm talking about the whole time I've been talking to you. You had not told the truth yet until you said that right there. You know what I'm talking about? Because you sure there ain't none of my people. Because guess what? I ain't never want to hit nothing. I don't even like to fight my own people. I ain't never want to fight black people. Never. I'm talking about any time there was a situation where it came about that there would be an altercation or disagreement the way it could get physical between my own people, I would seek to break that up. I never want to do harm to my own people. Even when I was hustling, it would have pained me greatly if I would have had to shoot a nigga in his face. You know what I'm talking about? I won't do nothing to my own people. Why would I want to hurt my own people? That don't make no sense. You know what I'm talking about? I want to hurt that nigga that day, though. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I ain't going to tell you no lie. I don't tell you no lie. I want to hurt that nigga that day. You know what I'm saying? I thank the Lord, though. He let me keep my mouth under control. Because she was with, she about with that nigga was talking rough one. They were crazy, too. Because we didn't even know they were there. We were just down there. We were doing our thing. And then when we got finished, we looked up and that gold slap it in the squirrel game. Because these niggas stupid. These the same niggas sitting here talking about he saw the white man, he the devil, he going to hell. All this here got their Nikes on, got all this man clothes on, with their thrift store garment on. I'm talking about these niggas garments look like they were faded. Nigga needed tied with color safe bleach or something. How your clothes faded? How you gonna sit? That's the part that killed me. If you gonna go off and say you hate these people, why you got his shoes on? Why you got his pants on? Why you got a t shirt on? Oh, that's the curse, brother. Well, curse your brother man gets the sewing, nigga. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? How about you sew you some clothes then? Since he the white man, he the, he the devil, he going to hell. Does that make sense to you? Because I'm going to sit here and say somebody the devil, he going to hell, and I hate him. I'm not talking about an individual. I'm talking about a whole race of people. You think I'm going to have their clothes on? You think I'm going to have their shoes on? So you the same man you hate, you going to spin with him, huh? But you a Hebrew, you got your garments on, huh? With your fancy bracelets on, on and your headband, huh? Nigga told me my girl wicked, she left me because I wouldn't. Give her a covenant of marriage. I say she's smart. <laughs> she said, You ain't finna see here keep making a whore up out of her. He called the woman wicked. But nevertheless, look at verse uh look at verse nine. Let's just tell you, this guy, look what he tell you right here now. Listen to what he say. He said, Therewith bless we God, even the Father. Therefore we curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. So you gotta sit and say, You wanna bless God. You wanna say bless the Lord, pray the Lord, but then you wanna curse men. And when we talk about cursing men, I ain't talking about cussing nobody out. I'm talking about wishing evil on. Them. You wanna speak evil on people, talk evil about people. You know what I'm talking about? That's why he told you what? Don't be no tail bear, don't be no busybody. You know what I'm talking about? Because if you ain't a tail bear and a busybody in people's business and what they got going on, you ain't got to worry about that happening door. You know what I'm talking about? Then the only time if you're going to have that situation come up because you're messing with stupid individuals. You know what I'm talking about? I don't like stupid individuals. I like peace. I ain't never liked to argue. I couldn't even live with a woman who liked to argue. I promise to you. You know what the book say about what it's better to do if you live with a, pr uh, a proud and contentious woman? You know what the book say you do? That man said it's better for you to dwell on a rooftop. Straight up. Say the, the book man say it's better to dwell on the top of a roof than to dwell with a, a loud, a proud, and contentious woman. Book says it's better you to dwell in the wilderness than to be with an arguing woman. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't with so you know I ain't finna sit around and argue with no man. You know what I'm talking about? Not to the point where I lose my peace. You know what I'm talking about? If you can sit there and you see you about to lose your peace because you dealing with people, don't you think it's time to start leaving them niggas alone? Don't you think it's time to you know what? I'm not even finna cuz I know this nigga stupid. You know what I'm talking about? Man, my nigga Crunch, I love that nigga now. But I knew what this nigga used to like to do when we were hustling, man. That nigga used to like to come in the spot. Ain't nobody told this nigga sweet, clean, nothing. You know what I'm talking about? Nigga cleaned up everything, turned around. Let me get a, can I get a rock? Who told you to do it? You know what I'm talking about? Now he get all crazy. It get to the point, you know what? I ain't even argue with this nigga. I'm going to let this nigga clean up his whole house. I'm going to do one or two things. If I'm feeling good, I'm going to give him a rock. If not, I'm going to get him walk right out the door. And nobody told you to clean this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up. Because that's the only way I can deal with it. Because I ain't told you to do this. Because, but the difference, what I'm telling you, is I know how he is. So, therefore, I know what he's going to do. I can't let myself get mad with the man about doing it. Because he's going to do it anyway. You know what I'm talking about? Well, you know what people going to do? Just let it go. The Lord knew all them people were going to try before they tried him, didn't he? He knew what Judas was going to do before he did it, didn't 
So when, did, did he let you get Judas get let him get off riled up? This wicked nigga right here. I hate this nigga. This nigga gonna kill me. He ain't do none of that. He said, "Yeah." What do you, he say? Is it me, Lord? He said, "You said it, nigga. You know what time it is. Go do what you gotta do. You know what I'm talking about? Well, you know what time it is. Let them do what they gotta do. You gotta rise above it. Cause remember what I told some of y'all. People be watching you, don't. When you claiming you following this here, or even Lord behold, you open up your mouth and say you a Jew, and then you tell them what that means. Just believe them people eyes like this here, watching everything you do, and they gonna poke at you, and they are gonna try you, and they are gonna do all this here. You know what I'm talking about? So you have to see that. You got to be able to, if you want to be drawn out of the water. Because if you can be able to restrain and hold all that up, you think the man won't be able to give you his spirit off that? Because you're showing what? What you showing? What, what fruit of the spirit are you showing? You're showing temperance. Self-control. So that too. That too. Remember what we heard, what we heard Slim say uh, last night? <laughs> Girl, my own boy, we ended up playing, man. It got my own boy hot. And it's on a hooper. And we lose it. It's not my fault. He said, Lord, give me patience. <laughs> and this is why, because you know this man ain't following no book. He like this here. Lord, give me patience. Because he already know. If you don't help me out with my patience, I'm going to turn around and hit cause square in his mouth. But you know what? He had, I mean, even for somebody who's a sinner and in the world, he handled that situation good, though. Because he know this thing is going to make me cuss him out. Like, really, really cuss. Because he was cussing out. But I'm talking about, but I'm talking about really, really to the point where cause take this as disrespect and go want to box. You know what I'm talking about? And I really want to box him right now, not for his play, but for the stupid stuff he's saying out of his mouth to justify his play. You know what I'm talking about? This is what got me hurt. Oh, they had my dog hot, man. They had him hot, boy. I'm talking about he ain't butt pile 112 pounds. Man. They had him hot though. You know what I'm talking about? Good, man. I'm talking about they had him hot though. But that's the key thing. You got to sit there. Y'all got to have that in y'all mind. If y'all dealing with people. Who ain't just don't say, Lord, give me patience. Exercise it. Don't ask him to do something. Ask him to do something for you that you're not even willing to exercise. He just ain't gonna come down and say, I'm gonna give you some patience, my child. You know what I'm talking about? No, exercise it. Look at your example. What did Peter tell you? He said, When he was reviled, he reviled not back. When he was threatened, he threatened not. He said, Look to your example who did no sin. You need to look to him. That's why we tell you what? Put ye on Yahshua the Messiah. And make no provisions to fulfill the lust of the flesh thereof. Every time you want to snap and go off on people, that's your flesh. So you got to kill it. See, what I, that's why I made that example of when I was in him and plot. Since my flesh was dead, even though my flesh like hit that nigga in the mouth, it's dead. I'm not going to react to it. Because that's under control. My, cap, my thoughts are in captivity to the Lord. I already know. I cannot do that. The thought to cuss him out never even entered into my mind. Because I already know. I cannot talk like that. I cannot deal with this man like that. Because if I do, who am I shaming? I'm shaming him. And then myself. You know what I'm talking about? And then the people who are with me. You know what I'm talking about? On top of that. That makes it even worse. Because now you don't shame the father, the son, yourself, and whoever will join you. Oh, the thought didn't even come to mind to cuss him out. Thought can't. Because I my, because I had done already died to that. I had been stopped cussing long before that happened. Little Muffin tell you, I used to cuss like a sailor, didn't I? Every other word. Didn't even have to talk like that. By the time I got around this man here, that had been gone. The thought came in my mind was, I'm going to punch this nigga square in his chin. You know what I'm saying? But my mind like this here, well, you know you can't do that. I say, I know, Lord, I can't do it. But if he flinched wrong, if you just let him flinch wrong, oh, I want to hit him square in his mouth. Because I just told you why I wanted to hit him in his mouth. I asked him as a man, don't talk to me like that. I talk to you any way I want to talk to you. So you just basically told me that I'm not a man. Like that's almost borderline. It's two things that could get you whooped. Male or female. Hold on. I'm gonna ask Glove and Dwight, cause they know. What's the one what's the two things whether a man or a woman could do to you where you'll punch them in their face? Don't make no difference. Put the hands on them? No, 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 no. Huh. No. Huh. Put your hands on them. No, that ain't it. A woman, I'm talking about there are two things that a man or a woman could, see a woman could do certain things, you might not hit them. But if a man or a woman performs these two specific activities, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That you might go ahead and snap and go to punching niggas in the face. And you know what them two activities is? If you, if they slap you. Or if they spit on you. <laughs> Touche. I can eat that one. You know what I'm talking about? I can eat that one. 
<laughs> I, and, I, and I understand that and I hear you, but I'm just telling you as a man though, whether you're dealing with a saint or whether you're dealing with a sinner. If you slap a man, now a man might show restraint with a woman if she's slapping, but if a man slaps him, you guarantee you're going to see two grown men in the street tussling. Because when you slap that man, you just told him, nigga, I do not respect you as a man. You a hoe in my eyesight. You have a vagina and you bleed once a month. Because niggas don't slap women. Niggas slap hoes. Women that, women that they don't have respect for. Men don't slap a woman they have respect for. They just won't lift their hand up the door. And somebody got tied to that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if somebody walk up in your face, and I'm talking about, and I done seen niggas hawk loogies too. Like go deep and spit in a nigga face. And spit in a nigga face. Look here, man. Guess what? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And that's male or female. If a woman was to walk up and spit in a man's face, she should already be prepared that two, two three jabs is coming straight for her face. <laughs> she should already be prepared for that. <laughs> Any man that walk up and spit in another man's face already be better be getting ready to throw his setup or coming with a punch after he do it. <laughs> Because you already just invited this man to a fight. And then there's certain terminology you can say out your mouth that's guaranteed that dude say to guarantee to, to get a rise out of man to cause him to fight. One of them is inviting the man under your clothes. You know what I'm talking about? Inviting the man to your penis. That's a surefire way. You might get a grown man to swing on you by that. And another and another thing and another thing is to call somebody the uh the worldly word word for fornication. With the word for your bum after that nigga. That's a show file. I used to see it. Or a nigga calling you a female dog. With them saying two word file. Because I done seen young niggas talk to each other like that. And then they talk to other dudes like that. And then can't hit him in the mouth. You know what I'm talking about? And he like this here. And I sitting there telling them young nigga, You can't put. That's not even cool for y'all to be playing. Talking to each other like that. And then you come up. To, you got some dude. They don't find that funny. You call him. They ain't gonna be like. You call him. Bah! You'll never call another one that again. Now, like, you're absolutely right for the word. See, but we ain't talking about getting spit on for the word. The Lord got spit on for the word. You seen that bus driver in Cleveland, that young girl spit on him, what he did, he hit him with uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> no hesitation. No hesitation. It, it, wasn't about, oh, it wasn't about, oh, that's a woman, because he would have did it to a man, too. I'm sitting there telling you. Any man that got any, any semblance of intestinal or testicular fortitude, if you spit upon them, this could be the meekest man walking the earth. That nigga going to do something to you. If he don't swing on you, he coming back busting. Because you just told me I'm not a man. You don't spit on nobody. I don't care how mad, I don't care how mad nobody gets you to take the time to sit back and gather up saliva in your mouth and expel it on another human being. You asking for trouble. What you say? Uh, you asking for trouble. You be mad when you sneeze at some of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> you asking for trouble. Even with the word, it's gonna take every ounce of the power of the Lord to restrain you. You know what I'm talking about? And I ain't saying that it's cool to hit no woman. I'm telling you off the rip though. As a man, I know if a woman was to spit on a man, the likelihood of her getting punched in the face is hundred percent. Because I know it's hundred percent for a man to get punched in the face with doing it to a man. Because niggas like this, they nigga already know. What's the spit hit me? First thing they think, it's right, and they're and they going to react. So, so you have to look at this here. When people spitting words at you or spitting activities or ways to you that's getting you aggravated, you, gonna, you, you know you can't react in that same fashion as if that spit hit your face and you be like, I'm going to hit this nigga. Because when people say stuff out to you and you ain't got control over your mouth yet, what the first thing you, you want to come right back to them? You want to see, we can't do that. We can't do that. I'm telling you, come with talking greasy. He was talking real greasy, saying words like this here that I would never say to another grown man. I wouldn't care how much I disagree with him, how much we just ain't seeing eye to eye, I'll never disrespect him. You know what I'm talking about? Because what if I wasn't really dealing with the word and I was just a nigga half stepping? He could have got dead. Niggas done got killed for less. The stuff he was saying out of his mouth, I done seen niggas get shot by that. You know what I'm talking about? Like, nigga go, oh, say what? Oh, this way right here, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? They say, you know, niggas gunning at you. Because you can't talk to people like that. Y'all have to realize that your mouth can get you taken up out of here. You can't talk to people any kind of way. You just can't do it. You know what I'm talking about? Not if you're going to say you're a mature adult, especially some of y'all got children. You know what I'm talking about? You have to manifest that to you. You can't talk like that. It's bad if people want to do it. You ever seen niggas just talk to people any kind of way? Mm -hmm. Any of y'all know people who yeah. talk to people any kind of way? They they are not the they are the least like people you ever seen them. Mm -hmm. 
If something happened to him, what nobody gonna feel bad about it? See, you have to look at that. Just because people talk to you any kind of way don't mean you can talk to them any kind of way. Because you want to bless God's name. Most of y'all, when you pray or you sing a spirit, you want to bless God's name. You see a nigga you don't like, you want to take off on him. And we can't do that. You just can't do it. Because it's not good for your health. Look what else you say. I know we're good enough on other things, but I really want y'all to understand that. Though. Can't take off on people like that. He say, uh, he say, out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing, my brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth both a fountain send both at the same place, sweet and bitter? Sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Now we know that no fountain can do it, but we know there's fresh and salt water rivers. St. John's River is an example of that. But guess what, though? That's being a man, because what did the Lord tell you? Evil tree bring forth corrupt fruit. And a good tree bring forth good fruit. You ain't going to be able to bring forth both now. Because if you spewing foulness out your mouth, then guess what you got in your heart? Because what did the Lord say? Abundance of the heart is how the, how the mouth speak. So if you don't want your mouth to be speaking the things that you got coming out of it, then what that means you got to do? That means you got to get that stuff out your heart then. then. And when you get this stuff out your heart, then you can begin to be drawn out the water. But let's go back. What we were looking at for him? We finished 2 Corinthians 7, didn't we? Oh, we still got to go to Psalms 40. We'll get there in a minute. I want you to look at 1 John 5, though, because this man say his burden is light. Let me show y'all why his burden is light. I know we took off on the tangent, but y'all forget me. 1 John 5, look at verse 3. He say, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. I mean, that's a light thing, isn't it? If something grievous to you, it means it's a burden to you. It's aggravating to you. It's hard on you if it's grievous. This man already told you, my burden is light. My responsibility is light. You need to look at the things that the Lord wants you to do. He ain't asking you to do nothing difficult. It's not grievous to you. It's not a burden to you. It's not hard to you. The only thing why it's hard to you because you still want to do what you want to do. You still want to go the way you want to go. You still want to flow the way you want to flow. You're going to have to let the man put the bricks and bridles in your mouth. The man say, take his yoke on you. Take his yoke on you and let him direct your way. You know what I'm talking about? Because everybody be like, I'll let the Lord direct my steps. If you walk in the sin, he's not directing your steps. But we still haven't ascertained this one last thing. What does the book say will justify you with God? He said, how can a man be justified with God and he that's born of a woman be clean? Now, we done dealt with how to be clean, right? Now, how will you be justified with God? Anybody know where we should go? Let's go to Galatians 2. Everybody looking at me crazy. There you go. There you go, little muffin. I know a muffin, though. Galatians 2 and 17. Make it 16. He says, knowing this, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahshua the Messiah. Even we have believed in Yahshua the Messiah that we might be justified by the faith of the Messiah and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by the Messiah, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore the Messiah the minister of sin? God forbid. So if you're seeking to be justified, to be drawn out the water. By the Lord, because we know by what? He said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly going to flow rivers of living water. Then. You know what I'm talking about? So if you're seeking to be justified by this faith to be drawn out of the water, he said, you can't be found no sinner. He said, this is the Messiah teaching you to sin? He said, God forbid. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know what I'm talking about? So if you're seeking to be justified by this man, you need to get every evil thought, every evil way. Every evil doing, every carnal thought, activity, you need to get it out of there. And if a carnal thought pop in your mind, you need to bring it into the obedience of the Messiah. Just like Paul told you to in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Bring it into captivity. If you was in bondage and the man delivered you from bondage, why won't you be a slave to the Lord? Why won't you be a slave to righteousness, a slave to holiness, a slave to eternal life? That's all you got to do. Be a slave to that. If you want to be drawn out of the water. Look what else he say. He said, but if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. See, that's what a lot of y'all want to do. You want to deal with the word, then you want to go back to things you don't put away or destroy, the things you need to leave alone. You want to build them back up again. 
You want to build them back up again. You want to rebuild relationships with this person or rebuild going over here or rebuild being a friend with this person or rebuild messing with this man or woman. The man said, you're going to make yourself a transgressor. I told you don't make no league with him. And what he said, I told mm -hmm. you don't make no league with him. And he said, why have you not obeyed my voice? Why have you done this? Now you can see the correlation between what we read, we read and judged. Now, you say, why you done did this? Hold on, y'all. I got you, bro. You hear me? Yeah, I got you, man. You good? All right. All right. So let's go. Where was that? Where was that? We got that. We need to go back to Psalm 4, then. And see, the key thing to being drawn out of the water is you need, when you hear the word, you need to obey. Because this is the key, see, key thing now. What we're dealing with is showing you the correlation with the look. The man say, I looked upon your burden. He said, and the burden was, was, was what? Was sin. I looked upon, matter of fact, Hebrews 2. Matter of fact, let's go to Exodus 2 again, then we go to Hebrews 2 just to make this refresh. We'll see where we started from and all the stuff that sprang from it. Hebrew 2 and 10, Exodus 2 and 10, as I say. He said, the child grew and she brought him under Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son and she called his name Moses. And she said, because I drew him out of the water. And he said, and it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown. He went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brethren. And he looked this way and that way and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. So when he's sitting there looking at this, this man said he was drawn out of the water. He seen that we was being smited by sin. So let's look at Hebrews 2. He said, then he said he went and he slew the Egyptian. So we know what did the Lord come to do? He came to take away death then. He came to take away sin. He came to kill that. <laughs> what? You went straight to it? No, I got it. What you got, what I just said? I mean, I got it, but... It just clicked? No, it didn't. It, it, it clicked when you said it. Okay. But I just had to put that, ha-ha. Uh -huh. I hear you. Put the emphasis on it, like, dang. You know what I'm saying? Hebrews 2 and 14. Did you hear that, Lamar? That made sense for you? He said now. Remember, he said he was drawn out of war. Mm -hmm. he, he spied the burden of his people. He seen that his brethren was being smited by an Egyptian. He seen that we were being smited by sin, which means we were being smited by death. So he came and he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand, meaning he got rid of sin. He got rid of death. He came uh -huh. to kill that. Look at this thing. <laughs> that makes sense for y'all. That that makes sense for y'all. We show it to y'all the book in a minute, though. He say, for as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death he might destroy him that had power over death. That is the devil. So that means he's coming to kill something right then. He say through death he killed death. And he had been the same. Because remember he said it's finished. He said he came to make his life a ransom for many. You know what I'm talking about? Because remember what we just looked at Act 7. What he said that this man when he came and did that. They said he came to make you a judge and a rule over us. He said y'all didn't even know this man was a deliverer. Because what was he coming to deliver us from? Sin and death. Let's see what he say. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So that's what Moses was coming to show him. Wasn't it? Mm -hmm. That these people were subject to bondage. He came through and he slew the Egyptian to show them, I'm coming to deliver you from bondage. And the lesson was to show you how the Lord was going to come. I'm going to come slay sin so you could be free from this bondage. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? And how was he able to do it? When he was drawn out of the water when he came out of the grave. And everybody else, everybody want to be drawn out of the water. But the thing is, you're not letting this man kill the bondage. You're not letting him kill the Egyptian. You want to try to keep the Egyptian alive. See, look, hold on. Go to Isaiah 30. We'll finish this Hebrew too. And this Sunday, First John, we got to look at. Y'all bear with me. He bring stuff to mind. It makes sense or just like to say, or, or like a nigga tell you, I'm reaching right now. And we reaching right now. No, oh, that makes sense for you, Lamar. Thank the Lord. Isaiah 30 and 1. Uh, that's <laughs> huh? You wouldn't even believe he just gave us that right then and there on the spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Well, what we're working with, we had a general idea. Isaiah 30. He said, Woe to the rebellious children. He said, Destruction. Say of Yah, that take counsel, but not of me, that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. See, this is the whole key thing. Them people who said that in the wilderness by Moses, I mean, who said that by Moses, who made you a judge and a ruler over us. Hey, that's the same people that they said in the wilderness. Who is this guy? That's the same thing he said with the Lord when he came. Who is this guy? He said, you didn't want to be covered with his covering. That's what's wrong with a lot of y'all. You don't want to be covered with his covering. You want to add sin to sin. 
you want to rebel, but think you ain't rebelling because the man told you stop making league with this stuff. You steady doing it. Look what else he say. They want to go down to Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Say so you steady walking down the sin. And you want to be strong and and because who the God of this world? Satan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? So you want to be strong with the ruler of this world. And what do you say now? He's saying you trust in that shadow of bondage. He said, therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt be your confusion. We go to 2 Corinthians 11. We get back to Hebrew 2. He said, since you trust in Pharaoh, that's going to be your shame. She said, that's going to be your shame because you trust in Pharaoh. 2 Corinthians 4, I should say. 2 Corinthians 4 and about verse 4. Make it verse 3. We just read this other day. He said, since you trust in Pharaoh, that's going to be your shame. You know what I'm talking about? You got to stop going back to sin. It just, got, it just ain't worth it. He said, but if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of the Messiah, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Y'all need to stop going down to holler at Satan. You need to stop going to holler at Satan. Hebrews 2 again. You need to stop hollering at Satan. Because when you hollering at sin, you hollering at Satan. You're trying to strengthen yourself with him instead of strengthening yourself with the Lord. Well, we start that by verse 15. Look what he said. He said, deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. He said, for truly he took not on him the nature of angels, but took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Now, you see the correlation back there. That's just two little months. He said he despised his brethren being smited with sin, didn't he? Say, so he seen him getting smited by an Egyptian. I came to save him. I came to save him. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to let that part of that in your mind. The man see y'all being smited with sin. He came to save you. You steady letting the man beat up on you instead of going ahead and latching on to the man who came to save you. Latch on to the man who came to save you. He said that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest and things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Because that's what Moses was trying to do. He was trying to be faithful to his brethren. One. And he was showing mercy to his brethren for standing up to fight for him. You know what I'm talking about? So that he can reconcile them to God. Because that's what I was showing him. We just read that in Acts 7. That's what I was showing you. He said, for he that himself hath suffered being tempted, he's able to succor them that are tempted. So he said he's, being a, he's able to be an aid and a help and relief to you when you tempted because he was. What is that aid and help and relief of mine? It's the word. It's the word. When the word dwells in your heart, look at Psalms 119 about verse 10. Y'all all right on that? Everybody all right? I know y'all got the mutes in verse 10. You know what I'm saying? Y'all all right? I know y'all y'all I know y'all got the mutes on because some of y'all got turning. Y'all all right? It makes sense for y'all? Huh? Nicole Bridget, that makes sense for y'all? Barry, I you know I already know that it'll get put up later on for the so you can catch what you ain't see what you ain't heard. But Nicole Britton, did it make sense for y'all? Does Exodus 2 make sense for y'all? All right, now you run a joke. I'm serious now. Y'all need to consider this. Psalms 119 and 10. He said, with my whole heart have I sought thee. This is why a lot of y'all can't get the spirit. You're not seeking a man with the whole heart. You're seeking him with about a piece of your heart. You're letting the world still keep your heart. You're letting sinners keep your heart. You're letting your flesh keep your heart from seeking this man completely. That's the first commandment, is it not? Love God thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might and with all thy strength. A lot of y'all don't love a man all the way. You love him partially. That's why you, well, a lot of relationships y'all done had with, with people, whether it be uh, significant others or regular people, the reason why a lot of them failed, the reason why a lot of them weren't successful, because you weren't loving this person with every ounce of your being. You weren't giving all yourself to them. You think you can love somebody a piece of the way or you don't have to love them all the way? How you going to love the same thing with the Lord? How you going to love him with a piece of your heart? You got to love him with all your heart. Every ounce of it. You got to be willing to be strong to stand on his word, even if you may suffer. A lot of y'all ain't willing to do that. Y'all want to serve the man when it's convenient for you. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of y'all do the same thing what they said this year. Oh, if you show us a sign, we'll believe you and follow you then. And what the Lord told them, a wicked adulterous generation seek after a sign, and nigga, you ain't going to get one. You know what I'm talking about? And you ain't going to get one, because he was the sign. The word is the sign. 
The righteousness is the sign. If you can't see the sign, he surely ain't going to show you one. Because even if he gave you a sign, you still wouldn't believe him. You know what he, Israelites going to do? They're going to ask for another one. That's what, he, that's what Israel going to do. They're going to ask for another one. Man, give you four signs. You're going to be like, said, well, just give me one more. And then maybe I just believe. He said, you know what? I can't be messing with you. You're not going to be justified by me. Because the man already told you, by knowledge of my righteous servant, he's going to justify me. That's how you're going to be justified in the sight of God. You're going to have to believe. Not just be like, oh, I can see him in the book. Show that in your life you believe. Show that in your life you believe. Anybody can say you believe the man, the son of God, according to these scriptures. But what did, what did James tell you? But your faith without some work is good and dead. He said the same matter of fact. Let's look at this verse 11. We get verse finished in verse 10. And we read that in James real fast. Psalms 119 and 10. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandment. Because if, if, if a donkey or a mule got a bridle in it or a yoke on him, he can't wander away, can he? That's how y'all can't wander away from the word. That's why the man say take his burden on you. Take his yoke on you, I should say. And learn of him. Because then you're not going to wander. Because if you learn of him, you seek him with the whole heart in him. You know what I'm talking about? Then you're not going to wander. You're not going to go astray. See, a lot of y'all, y'all be quick to go astray because you don't got the yoke on. So you easily can get out the way. But look what he told you in verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That's why some of y'all still be sinning and you can't get right because you ain't hid his word in your heart. So there's no way you can be drawn out the water. Because then that's what drew the Lord out the water. That's what rose him from the dead, ain't it? We done read in Romans 8 numerous times, have we not, little mother? He said, if the spirit that be in the Messiah be in you, he going to quicken you with his, mortal, with his body and raise you from the dead, ain't it? That's what got him out the grave. How you gonna get out the grave if you don't have that? Cause you're not hiding the man word in your heart. You know what I'm talking about? You're not hiding it in there. You don't want you want to be partial. You want to be halfway. You know what I'm talking about? And like we mentioned earlier, when things don't go the direction you want to go into, you want to get upset with the Lord. You want this man as if this man is your personal genie or your personal wish maker. You know what I'm talking about? Me, myself, I don't care what it is. It's a couple of things I ain't really care to do, but that's what he wanted me to do. I did him, nevertheless. I might not particularly care to. Ain't what Jonah. Did Jonah particularly care to go to Nineveh? He tried to go with him. You know what I'm talking about? He tried, but the Lord went ahead and cracked across his head, and when he got cracked across his head, what he did? Let me go ahead and go. Mm -hmm. See, some of you niggas got to get cracked across the head six, seven times before you got to say, let me go ahead and do what he told me to do. See, he ain't got to hit me but one time. You know what I'm talking about? He ain't got to hit me but one time. The man say, Bop, go this way. I'm going to go that way then. I ain't want to go that way, but I'm going to go that way then. It's simple as that. It ain't that hard. Is it? is it that hard to just go the way the man tell you to go? It ain't that hard. Even if you feel like, Lord, I really don't want to do that. But when he go ahead and crack you across your dome, you, he letting you know right then, I need to go ahead and go this way. Then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That happened to me, man. I'm not going to sit here and tell y'all it ain't never happened to me. It's like, this here. Well, I don't look like, Lord, I don't really care to do that. Then. He's like, oh, you're going to do it. Well, guess what? The seriousness in your tone, that's going to let me know. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Like this here, man. This man done said certain things like, you know what I'm talking about? What spoke to my spirit, make my whole body shake like an earthquake. Like this here, he ain't even playing. I'm going to go ahead and do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't really care to do that. But guess what? My king told me that's what I need to do. So that's what I need to do. Look at James 2, though. James 2 and about verse 22. Make it 21. Matter of fact, make it verse 20. Y'all mm -hmm. need to notice here. James 2 and 20. He said, but wilt thou will? He said, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See how thou, see thou how faith wrought with his works, and by his work was faith made perfect? And you know why his work was made? What was his work? When he went to offer Isaac up, why did he went to offer Isaac up? Because he told him to. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? And that's not like this here. Oh, see, that's not in the law. But when the man tell you to do something, then when you make the movement to go do it, don't you show your faith and belief in this man that he's willing, he going to do what he say he's going to do because you got up and moved? See, a lot of y'all, y'all hear the word, you don't move. You know what I'm talking about? You're like, well, I'm going to do this then. I'm going to do this then. Or, or this is the one that killed me. Niggas say, when the dude, what do I tell you, dude, talking about, should he go to that orientation on the Sabbath? You know what that nigga said? So when the brother say, you should pray on it, brother. Pray for what? Yeah, straight up. <laughs> pray for what? Man, I bet not never hear now one of you niggas talking about, I need to pray on something, and we just showed it to you out the book. Nigga, I'll slap you in your face. 
You know what I'm talking about? I'm talking about with my Bible too. I go get my big one. Straight up. Don't never hear me, you niggas, talking about I need to pray on Sunday when the man shows you straight up out the word what you got to do. Ain't nothing to pray about it. Book say what it say. And you're going to go pray to them. What you think he going to tell you? Something different. I hope he tell you, you big, stupid, retarded nigga. What did my word say? Come, come praying to me by son. I already gave you the answer to it, you idiot. Don't think Lord won't talk to you like that. Didn't he talk to the disciples like that? He called them fools and slow hard, didn't he? I remember the first time my she was like this. I said, yeah, that man called his own 12 fools for not believing. You around here talking about you need to pray. I need to get some confirmation. Your word, the word is confirmation. What else he say? He's saying, Ab and the scripture was fulfilled which say if Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, he was called the friend of God. He said Genesis 15 and 6 was fulfilled when he did that, huh? See, a lot of y'all, the scripture can't be fulfilled that you could be kind of the friend of God and be righteous and justified with God because you don't believe him. How are you going to get the spirit when the Messiah said you can't get it but by faith in him? So you know why he was drawn out the water? You know why Yahshua was drawn out the water? Because he believed his father would fulfill his word. He said he knew his father's commandment was what? What he told you in John 12 and 15? He said, I know my father's commandment life everlasting. I know what my father tells me to do. I live forever off it. So therefore, I'm willing to do it, even under death. A lot of y'all ain't willing to go all the way to death. A lot of y'all ain't even willing to go to losing a job or getting cussed out or losing your wife, losing your friends, losing a husband, boyfriend, whatever. You know what I'm talking about? A lot of y'all ain't willing to lose your family members. They don't want to talk to you. A lot of y'all don't want to lose that. You know what I'm talking about? Abraham left everything he knew, did he not? Every familiar place, every familiar person, because the Lord told him to move. Lord can tell some of you niggas to move. I need to see if this going to happen first. Then I'll go. Guess what the Lord going to say? Go ahead and stay behind me. Remember Lot's wife. You know what I'm talking about? Turn to a pillar of salt. Because when I tell you to move, you should move. You know what I'm talking about? Now, does that mean sometimes when you put it in your mind to make, to make something happen, does it mean it'll be instantaneous all the time? You know what I'm talking about? But you already got in your thought process that if this is what he wants me to do, I'm going to do that. You feel what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. See, they don't feel that way. Man, look here. He told Jeremiah, I want you to get butt book and naked. How many of y'all, the Lord told you to get butt naked, you're going to get butt naked and do what he told you to do? Y'all going to come up with a way. Well, is that the Lord telling me to do that? But that was the Lord telling you all the other stuff. But now when he comes to doing something you don't want to do, that's not him. You know what I'm talking about? Or I don't know if he got the word or not. You knew he had the word every other time he was preaching. But then when the sudden came, you didn't want to do. I'm not sure if the Lord gave him that word. That's how niggas think. See, we can't be no nigga. You already know how I feel about that. I don't care about nobody calling me no nigga. Because I don't live like one. You know what I'm talking about? I don't live like one. It's time to start living like one. I done told y'all many times before, we can't be no hypocrite, man. That man said there's no hope for the hypocrite. We can't be half-stepping and pump fake. Ain't no hope for you in that. You know what I'm talking about? Don't make no sense to pick the book up and go to hell. We do too many people who doing that every day, don't. Whether they, go to, whether they gather on Saturday or Sunday. Why would we want to be like them? We can read a whole book in this. We can read this whole book, people doing that. Why would we want to do that? Why would we want to sit down and listen to niggas ain't telling us nothing where we have no fear of God whatsoever? No faith in God, no trust in God, no hope in God or nothing. This is not a vain thing for you. This is your life. This is what the law say. See, this is not a vain thing for you. This is not worthless for you to do. It's not worthless for you to get rid of stuff. You know what I'm talking about? It's moving day. You know what I'm talking about? Moving day, you get you toss away the stuff you don't need on. When you move, you take everything. Now, some people do. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, I took a dig at you right there, huh? No, I'm talking about you need to clear your throat. No, nah, hey, man. Got a sore throat. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. well, not really a sore throat, but it's a little phlegm now. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? I hear it. I just do that automatically. I ain't got no smell to spit it out. Verse 24. He said, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and had sent them out another way? And you know why Rahab was justified? Let's look at Joshua and see why she was justified. Let's see why she was justified. Let's see what she did. It wasn't just her hiding the messengers. Look at what she said. Let's see what chapter it is. Is it chapter 2? It's chapter 2. Joshua 2. Let me see what verse it is. 
Verse 9. And it says, this is what she said. She said unto the men, I know that Yah has given you the land, and that your terror has fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. We have heard how Yah dried up the water of the Red Sea for you, and when you came out of Egypt, and what you did unto the two kings of the Amorites, and that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For Yah your God, he is God in heaven above and the earth beneath. So you see what it is here? She said, these are people of God right here. I got to roll with them. That means she joined herself. He said, I already know. Y'all, Yah is God of heaven above. This is God of God, Lord of Lord. This is the true God. Ain't that what she said? That's why she was justified by it because she believed that he is the living God. And that he is able and capable to do all things that he speak of. So she said, you know what? I'm going to show mercy and kindness to his children that maybe he'll show it to me. You know what I'm talking about? See, y'all don't even look at it in them terms. Y'all saying y'all believe he God, but then you not performing the works to show forth to this man to have mercy and kindness on you. Because she said, we done heard everything he done did. She said, our hearts melted. Why y'all hearts don't melt? Then we just read that you need to perfect the true holiness and the fear of God. God should make your heart melt knowing that man said, I'm going to burn you in hell. You disobey me. You know what I'm talking about? Your heart should melt knowing, I don't want no troubles. You see what I love you said? In Jericho, the people say, I don't want no troubles here, boy. I don't want no <laughs> troubles. She said, everybody faint. Y'all smashing everything. Y'all smashing everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not because of y'all. Mm -hmm. It's because of him. You know what I'm talking about? We got to consider that. Go back to the heat. Thank you. Verse 25. Now, he said, likewise. Also was not right have the harlot justified by works when she had received the messenger that had sent them out another way. For as with the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So guess what? If you ain't got the spirit, you good and done. Because when he talking about the spirit, he talking about that breath of life. He said the same way when that spirit go back to he who gave it, you good and dead. This man said, if you ain't got no works to show forth, you say you believe in God, you dead as well because you can't get no spirit, can you? You can't be drawn out of the water. You have a severe problem. Go back to Psalm 40 so we can get ready to wrap this thing on up. Because we've been rolling. We've been rolling. It's 22 minutes to 10. Lord permit, we won't keep everybody up all night. Maybe some of the night. Not all night. Psalms 40 and 1, Lamar. Psalm 40 and 1, everybody. That's the he gave me a headache. He said, I waited patiently for Yah, he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of the horrible pit and out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock and established my going. We already know. He did, didn't Yah show wait for him patiently for them three days, didn't he? He said he brought him about that whore. He brought him out that grave, didn't he? He told him. Go ahead. Look at John 2. He told him. Let's see if he told these people he was coming up out that pit. John 2, verse 46, or 21, I should say. Go to verse 19. John 2 and 19. And he says, And Yahshua answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty-six years with this temple and building, will thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. And when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remember that he said unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Yahshua had said. Now the only way they could be able to believe the scripture, I go back to what we read in Luke, that he sat down and he fed them bread, didn't he? He taught them the word. See, a lot of y'all, y'all don't, don't believe the scripture, know what the Lord said. When you see the manifestation of the word, you still don't believe what the man say, and you still don't believe what's written because you're not doing what he's telling you to do. And the key main thing we hawking and right back to every time is what he had us read. I didn't even know we were going to judge the two tonight. That man said, why are you steady making league with the inhabitants of the land? Why are you still fooling with these people when he told you don't touch the unclean thing and come out from among them? Be Kodesh. Be sanctified. Be separate. Be holy. Leave these people and things alone. He tells you, don't touch the unclean thing. You niggas still want to touch it. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Got some tea there? Hit the spot. I hear you, my Let's go back to Psalm 40. Now, when he said he set his feet upon a rock and he established his going, did he say his father's son? 
Fox said this man, he said he set his feet upon the rock because he the chief cornerstone. We have oh no, Psalm 40. Verse 3. Psalm 40 and 3. Listen to what he say. He said, He hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in Yah. He said he put a new song in his mouth. Let's see what that song was. Let's look at John 17. He said, Many gonna see it and they gonna fear. Let's see what if he put a new song in his mouth. It's John 17 and 1. These words spake Yahshua and lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, and he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the true God, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world war. Now, he said he's going to put a new song in his mouth. Ain't nobody ever talked about nobody coming back from the dead, did he? You know what I'm talking about? He said he put a new song in his mouth. And then he also told him, he also said that even praise to our God and many will see it. Now, he was speaking to his disciples and the disciples alone. This is the prayer right here that he came up. But he said many going to see it in fear and trust in Yah. Let's see what many saw it and feared and trusted in Yah. Because he was talking about sending that spirit down to him one. Especially in chapter 16. Because he said he'd give him eternal life. Look at verse, well we did the verse 6 in a minute. Look at Acts chapter 2. Yeah, but yeah, we, we're going to deal with that in a minute. But see, but see, that's not that's a little different than a new song. Yeah, that's what I thought you yeah, did. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You gonna get something? Cause he said many gonna see it in fear. Because right now he's giving that prayer. He's singing a. It's like to see a sing a new song. He's like singing a song of praise, not necessarily a hymn as, as what we do. But I feel you though. We gonna get there in a minute, Lord willing. Lord took us in a different direction before we. But he said many gonna see it and they gonna fear. Acts two. Verse three. He said there appeared under them cloven tongues like as a fire that sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they're dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because they heard, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak the leaders? And now we hear, we, and now hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Corinthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, and Pontus, and Asia, and Phygra, and Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes, and Arabian, Arabians. And we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Because then he say, who put it, speak a new song now, didn't he? He say, even praise unto our God. Because when these men were doing that, ain't that giving praise to God right now? They had no choice but to give praise to God because of the works. That, he said, we see in the wonderful works of God. When they hear the wonderful works of God, what end up happening? Don't that redound to the glory of God? He said, he that offered praise glorify me. And he that ordered his conduct are right. He said, I'll show him the salvation of God. You know what I'm saying? That was really good to you. That you yeah, had to smack with. First of all, I got that elbow to the throat. Just see Okay, okay. And he said, many shall fear and trust in y'all. So let's drop down now because we know, guess what Peter did? Peter then was speaking of the resurrection of the dead, right? And this Acts 2, right? And they broke scriptures down to bring this here. Because that was a new song. These men are speaking about resurrection of the dead. No one had ever heard of that before. Remember what Paul said? In 1 Corinthians 15, he said there's some men who say there's no rest. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. Hold the Acts 2, just because I said it. Let's look at it. Because the only way you can get the resurrection of the dead is to be drawn out the water. Because that's what happened with the Lord. He was drawn out the pit, right? And then from him being drawn out of the pit, we can be raised out of the pit. Because he was drawn out of the water. He was drawn out of the spirit. To be able to give us the spirit to do the same thing. We have to consider this. It's definitely necessary that we receive it and do what's necessary to get it. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 11. He said, therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach and so you believe. That go right back to telling you, if somebody preaching the same thing I'm preaching and living the same way I'm living, wouldn't it make sense to harbor to it? What did Paul say? It don't matter whether if I said it or they said it. We preached it, you believed it. Because what did Paul tell us already? If somebody come preaching another gospel, which you ain't never received or never heard, whether it be angel or spirit or man, what did he say they need to be? You know what he said they should be? He said if another man or spirit or angel come preaching another gospel on whom you have not received or whom you have not heard, what did Paul say let him be? 
Same thing he said to the serpent in the garden. Let him be a curse. You know what I'm talking about? Because men of God are going to say the same thing, ain't it? They're not going to say nothing different. They might bring a different, they might get a different uh, word than that man got, but they all going to meet in agreement and say the same thing, ain't it? You know what I'm talking about? They ain't going to never, con they ain't gonna never con contradict, these, con contradict themselves. They're not going to never conflict. You know what I'm talking about? It's just going to bring a totality. Uh, that's why he said we prophesy in part. You know what I'm talking about? This man got this over here. This man got this over here. But when you bring it together, the jigsaw puzzle is complete. You know what I'm talking about? He say, now, if the Messiah be preached that he rose from the dead, how say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then the Messiah is not risen. And if the Messiah be not risen, then is our preaching in vain and your faith is in vain. And yea, we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up the Messiah whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. So this is unserious. So, so this is what they were testifying to these people, wasn't it? That this man rose from the dead. Because we just looking in this Psalm 40. It's talking about him raising from the dead. And you know what I'm talking about? So we have to believe that. That this man going to raise from the dead. Because he said he was going to see a new song. And that these people and many would see it in fear and trust in Yah. Go back to Acts 1. Look at Acts 1. About verse 3. Or verse 2. He said, unto the day in which he was taken up. After that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Now let me look at John twenty. Because quite a few people seen this man after he rose from the dead, didn't it? Quite a few people seen him, didn't? It? That was a new thing. No one had ever seen anyone who died and rose from the dead. I can't remember the exact spot where it's talked about how many people saw this man after the fact, because he showed himself openly to many. Let me look at Matthew and see if that's what it is. I think. No, hold on one second. Matthew 27. Well, that's just the people who rose from the dead. But nevertheless, you know he just appeared to more than the 12, right? Y'all aware of that, right? Is that uh, And what? And Acts? Yeah. I appreciate it. That's so lit. No, that's what all them they said. They stood up there and prayed with you. But nevertheless, he bring it to mind. We'll get back to it. So then he said this here. He said, and they're going to fear and trust y'all. So let's look at about verse 37. Well, not verse 37. Look at verse 31 of Acts, the second chapter. He said, he seen this before, spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Yahshua have God raised up, wherefore we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God, exalted, having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he hath shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. So not only did he do two things, he said he sung a new song. Because remember, he was asking them to be the, the, the glorify him. He was going to be glorified by dying and raising from the dead, right? Because he said the Spirit was not given because Yahshua had not yet been glorified. You know what I'm talking about? And then through the giving of the Spirit, his children or his seed or his servants can receive it. So this is speaking of a new thing. We're talking about eternal life now. And he said many people are going to fear it and trust it. When they seen the man get that Spirit on them and speak in tongues and went to preaching that word, these men began to fear God, didn't they? Let's see if that happens. He said, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but saith himself, Yah said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made this same Yahshua whom you have crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now when they had heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and unto the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahshua the Messiah, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Is even as many as Yah our God should call. And with many other words that he testified and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. He's sitting here telling you, Y'all need to hearken to that yourself. Y'all need to save yourself from this untoward generation. A lot of y'all don't want to save yourself from it. A lot of y'all want to still cleave to him. The word ain't pricking your heart the way you say, What must I do? What do I have to do? When that word first pricked your heart, ain't that the first thing should hit should hit your mind? Did that hit your mind when it pricked your heart? What you got to do? Huh? That's not good, Lamar. 
No, I'm, I'm not even, you don't remember anything. What about you? <laughs> Thank you. That's what I did. First thing I did, I said, this whole book too, I'm going to hell. I got it, like I said, I got to learn this man's ways. My heart was prick. You know what I'm talking about? See, a lot of y'all, when that word come, your heart don't get prick. You know why your heart don't get prick? Because you got a heart of stone. You ain't got a heart of flesh. You can't prick stone, can you? That's why you say it is not hard for you to kick against the pricks. You would think after a while you would be injured from steady kicking and bucking. A lot of y'all don't even get hurt. A lot of y'all don't even get hurt. The worship slice you to pieces, you contrary to it. And not just sit back and be like, oh man, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And then you go right back doing what you were doing. That's what a lot of niggas do, no? Right. They hit. They wrong. I was just telling somebody other day now. I done seen many niggas. I done sat with them. People done boo-hoo cried in front of me right in their house. I don't want to go to hell. All right there. Next day, same nigga. You know what I'm talking about? Same person. You done been with me and seen Marie boo-hoo crying and what she went right back to doing. Same stuff then. Well, you been right. You didn't notice it. Last time we went to the house, she was in there crying. Next day, matter of fact, not even next day. Five minutes after we left, you still the same nigga. You know what I'm talking about? It don't make no sense. Because you can because a man say, I seek you with the whole heart, isn't it? So I won't wander. They say, man, what do we ought to do? Say Peter went ahead and warned him and encouraged him. You need to save yourself. Forget what we're doing right now. Are we not warning you and encouraging? You need to save yourself. From this untoward generation. All these niggas want to talk about is some fake snow. I don't care nothing about no fake snow. Stupid niggas say this is genetically modified snow. If any of you niggas can tell me how a man can genetically modify elements. That's showing you how stupid niggas is. Because what is water, little muffin? What is the scientific word for water? Everybody say it. Sometimes when you say don't say water, you say something else. You know what it is? Off the periodic table. H2O. Hydrogen, two pieces oxygen. You know what I'm talking about? If I remember what the two is. It's been a long time since I dealt with it. But you know, hydrogen, oxygen. Are those genetics? Are those genes? Does, does water have DNA? I mean, sit back. I see that I was informed a grown man say that snow was genetically modified snow. Does water have DNA? Cause they can't hear that. You crazy? They got the vibrations in my bone. All right then. <laughs> well, uh, but y'all. <laughs> but I want y'all to answer me on that. Now. Can any of y'all help me out on that? Does water have DNA? That's like. So how the water, how snow gonna be genetically modified? You can't do it. You can't do it. I'm serious. Niggas was like, yeah, I, it's, I, was, I, I was amazed. Niggas say this genetically modified snow. Really? So you think if somebody sat in a lab, these people ain't got that type of nigga, where the genes at? The only thing that can be have something genetic, it's got to have some type of ge genetic structure. It's got to be zygotes and all that other stuff you learn in biology class. You know what I'm talking about? You need some DNA, you need some blood, you need something. Only thing that got any of those type of things are plants, animals, and people. You know what I'm saying? You can genetically modify some crops, right? We know they do it. You know what I'm talking about? You can genetically modify some animals. We know they do it. You can genetically modify people. They don't like to let you see when they do it. You know what I'm talking about? Because you might get a grotesque creature. You know what I'm talking about? But they do it. So you have to sit there and look at that. show you how stupid niggas did. Niggas worry about fake snow in a Beyonce concert. At the grand, a Beyonce performance at the Grammy, then look here, you niggas ain't right with God. Who gives a damn what this wicked woman did at the concert? Her and her camera looking husband. Who cares? You know what I'm talking about? Why would I care what a whole bunch of sinners doing? And I say I'm a saint, I'm a servant of God, I'm, I'm a child of Israel, I'm, I'm an Israelite, I'm a Hebrew. What I care what they're doing? When he told you don't make no league with the inhabitants of the land, every nigga sat down and watched the Grammys of the people you making a league with them. And he told you don't fool with him. And then you fooling with other niggas who fool with him. You know what I'm talking about? Why you care? I ain't, have you ever seen any true righteous person sitting around talking about, boy, I can't stand white. I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't like the wicked whore. I don't like what she promote. Because she turned a lot of young girls into whores. I don't like her rotten husband. I don't like anybody who was on that show. I ain't going to say everybody. You know what I'm talking about? They even had a nerd to post up a Grammy singer walked out of the Grammys because of the performance. Stupid niggas shouldn't have been there in the first place. What you thought they were going to do? Beyonce's here. Katy Perry's here. Pink is here. Known whores. And I, when I say whore, I ain't talking about somebody who's sleeping with no whole bunch of men. Known whores. Known women who promote whoredom and prostitution of young girls. 
What do you expect to have? Nigga, you performing with Juicy J. Nigga who got a Grammy, I got an Oscar for singing his heart out here for a pimp. What you expect? Nigga, group is triple six. What do you expect? You know what I'm talking about? That's like sticking your hand in a, in a cage with a hungry Rottweiler and then being shocked when a nigga bites you. Or even worse, that's like walking around a whole bunch of broke niggas in the hood with a platinum chain on, a Rolex watch on, and $20,000 in each pocket and then be shocked these niggas robbed. I don't see a nigga do that. Got all this stuff on you in the middle of vultures and wolves and then you shocked when these vultures and wolves attack you. What you think they were going to do? You can't put no meat in front of no starving dog. You know what I'm talking about? These niggas sit at sinners and be shocked when sinners do what sinners do. And then want to post about it all day. I don't care, man. You know what I'm talking about? Niggas say the snow turned black. Well, nigga, it should turn black. Nigga, all the pollutants in there. See, ain't none of y'all from Jacksonville. Do you remember that stench, little mother? That used to be Carl Town? I think it was from the paper mill. I don't think it was from the sweet, sweet plant. I think it was from the paper mill. You might have been too young. There used to be. The who? The who? The landfill. The landfill? Yeah, and the Man, you'll go across, man, as soon as you come through, cross the Matthews Bridge. To get on 95, coming through out east, man, to really get around that corner, go back, Pearl, and uh, all the other street was escaping my mind. You know what I'm talking about? And Avenue, you know what I'm talking about? I mean, Boulevard, that's what I'm thinking about. Man, look at the stench would be so bad, man, you could have to do up, windows roll up, it's permeating straight through your car. I'm talking about make your stomach turn to knots. Like how your language, like you don't even want to go this way. It smelled horrible. That's from the pollute. These people run smokestacks. They run a nuclear plants, all type of plants, all day. And, like, they got small alerts in L.A. to this day. I would tell you, they got alerts in L.A. to where you can't even breathe. They got, oh, this is a good air day. Because the air is so polluted. You know what I'm talking about? Same thing in Japan. Then you think it's the chemtrails. Nigga, this air was polluted long before these people started spraying some chemtrails. Nigga, there was acid rain before they were crimped. Nigga, the rain burning people car paint. Hitting you and it's burning. What you think was going to happen? I just tripped me out because these niggas think these white folks really went in the clouds and manipulated frozen precipitation. I said, these niggas done lost their ever-loving mind. You know what I'm saying? And I be worried, and I mentioned that, y'all, because you got to be careful. <laughs> this is frozen precipitation. That's what snow is, is it not? That's frozen precipitation. So I want to hear. I want to hear now when the summertime comes and they go to raining. I want to. Is this fake rain? The rain don't dry when it hit the ground. The rain don't make no puddles, bro. Look, it's supposed to flow right, but it's flowing left. It's fake rain. You niggas idiots. You know what I'm talking about? And you know what happened? That make people. When you, <laughs> You're clever. You know what I'm saying? But when you come with the word and you be talking about stupid retarded stuff like that, you know what happens? You lose all credibility. Why would I listen to a nigga preach the word to me and this nigga just told me that's genetically modified snow. And you don't even got to be no science major. You ain't even got to get a C in science. All you have to do is just sit back and ponder for two minutes. Because at first you might hear, yeah, yeah, then you go to think of this. Genetics. Genetics. Nigga, rain don't got no genetics. Oh, this nigga, he's an idiot. Now you're going to come to me talking about, you need to leave that Greek New Testament alone. You need to do this here. No, I don't, man. I, man, I don't need to listen to you no more. You just told me rain had DNA. Do you understand? A grown man, older than us, got churn. Multiple. Multiple. Got churn. Huh? He got churn. A nigga on Facebook, nigga got churn. And we're going hell out of it, too. Older than me. You know a nigga got some that nigga older than me. Got and got churn. And got churn. Nigga say genetically modified snow. A nigga supposed to walk up to this nigga with that same snow and slap him with it. Cause no, nah, cause he no, nah, cause nigga is dumb. Cause you gotta sit back. It's one it's one thing to say something, right? It's one thing to say something that go against science. You know what I'm saying? Now, come on, man. I can see if you say, hey, man, this snow fake, man. This snow, I can see if they say the snow contaminated. The snow got pollutants in it. I can see that. I ain't mad at a nigga for that. But when you said genetically modified snow, 
You showed your total lack of researching skills, your total lack of intelligence, and pure and utter stupidity because you just sat here and told me some white men with some lab coats engineered some snow and snow come from water and water is an element and the elements are found on the periodic table. This is not genetics, you big dummy. They learned this in sixth grade, span uh, sixth grade science class. All of us learned that in sixth grade. Everybody about the sixth grade you learned about the periodic table, then. You remember that big old table and all that stuff on there? Some of y'all, they might have had you memorize it. They had us memorize it. I don't remember nothing on it. You, you know what I'm saying? Because gold is on the periodic table. It's nickel. You know what I'm talking about? That's the scientific name for gold. It's nickel. That's one of the elements that well, ain't one of. That's one of the elements that make up gold. It's nickel. You know what I'm talking about? So now you're going to tell me people can genetically modify some gold? When they make fake gold, what is that? They done took two fake elements and put them together. You know what I'm talking about? Man, I can't go. They got to watch these niggas. These niggas crazy, man. You know what I'm talking about? I just had to share that. I told you about that earlier. I just had to share that, though, because that tripped me out. That nigga say genetic. I had my mama tripping last night. I said, this nigga say genetically modified snow, mom. Genetically modified snow. Next thing you know, nigga going to be saying we got genetically modified volcanoes. You know what I'm talking about? They genetically modifying the volcanoes off. That's why they erupting all the time. You know what I'm saying? Niggas got too much time on their hands, man. You gotta watch them niggas. Now watch what happened when don't nothing happened at the Super Bowl. These niggas, the Dark Knight movie, the Dark Knight Returns, whatever. That movie came out two years ago, man. These niggas still sitting here waiting on these people to blow up a Super Bowl game. This is what you niggas worrying about. So what if they blow the Super Bowl game up? Nigga, if you die, you going to hell. So what good was you warning a nigga about that? How about you warn a nigga stop being a liar and a fornicator and disobedient to God? Why don't you warn a nigga about that? What am I sitting here? People might blow up a Super Bowl game. Hey, I ain't that nigga. Sucks for them. Sure you know what I'm talking <laughs> about? I ain't that met life saving. Guess what? And if they die on that day, guess what Guess what that means? The Lord said he saw fit for him to die. Mm -hmm. he, saw, he saw fit for him to die. I ain't finna be around here. They might blow up the Super Bowl. Oh, you better get ready. So then when I sit here and I tell everybody this and I post about this here and the Super Bowl don't get blown up and then I come out and see, brother, you need to check this scripture out about when the day starts. Man, I need to check out. I need to get away from you. Because you told me this this year and last year and nothing happened. See, I've been telling y'all. That's just what they do. That's what niggas do. Nevertheless, let me get on this up, man. These niggas had me true. I had to say, y'all got to be careful. Niggas stupid. Look at here. Look at verse 4 here, though. Hold on. We got to finish Acts 2. Because he said many fit. That's what was at Acts 2. I'm sorry. We in verse 41. Listen to what he said. Because he said many going to fear and trust y'all, right? In Psalm 40, right? He said, then they gladly received his word and were baptized. And the same day were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. Oh, well, you see that fellowship? How can you sit in a fellowship you ain't got nobody? How can you do it? You know what I'm saying? That's like asexual reproduction. You by yourself. You can't reproduce by yourself. Did the Lord reproduce by himself? Well, he did, and you know what I'm talking about, but you know what I mean, though. Didn't he have 12 with him? Was that man by himself? He had some soldiers running with him, didn't he? Look what else he said. And it says, in breaking of bread and in prayers, and fear came upon, oh, fear came upon every soul, and many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. And they all believed, and all that believed were together, and had all things in common. So now we see these people fearing and trusting in God right now, don't we? Y'all see that? Now oh, you want to rub your little mustache? Go on and rub it then. He's saying, they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men and every man as every man had need. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, and they eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily, as such should be saved. Now, you know where that comes from, little muffin? He said about, about them having singleness of heart. You know where that comes from? Because he told you in Jeremiah, give them one heart in one way. You see how all this book, all this book tying together and testifying what the man came to do? But you see how he sung a new song in the minute for you to believe on the man? You, that, you, that makes sense? You good on it? Mm hmm yeah, sit around with your leg crossed. Drop down about verse 7. You know I had to do it. Go ahead. Psalms 40 and verse 7, so we can wrap it up. You know, we did went through a good amount of book, but also we had to go on some rant, because these niggas is insane out here. Just like I seen somebody on my page the other day, uh, last night, posting about they went in a Christian church, and they talking about they were teaching about tithes and offerings. 
Let me ask y'all a question. Would you go in the Christian church? No, I don't know. Would you go? Would any of y'all on this line, would y'all enter in the Christian church talking about you want to hear what these people preach? That's my whole point. For what? You know why? You know the number one reason why y'all ain't got no business walking in no Christian church? Oh. Yeah. Because them crosses in them. Them pictures on the walls. All that. Y'all ain't got no business going in them. Don't make no sense to. You Jews, you should have Ohio, shouldn't it? That should offend you off the rip. Oh my God, you got a symbol of death in here. I'm gone. I'm gone. Hey man, it ain't number 945 or 1006. They'll be all right. He say, then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It's written of me. I delight to do thy will, oh my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. That's what the type of mind some of y'all need to get. You need to delight to do what the man tell you to do. Even if you don't want to do it. You need to delight to do what his will is, and you need to have the man law in, in your heart. Not just the law that's in Genesis to, uh, to Deuteronomy, but whatever this man tell you to do. Whether it be by his word, whether it be through his preachers, or whether he, whether he see fit to put it in your heart by his own spirit. You need to do what the man tell you to do. And you need to delight in doing it, and you need to have that man's word squarely and firmly hid in your heart. He said, I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I've not refrained thy lips, O y'all. Thou know. Now he said he preached righteousness in front of the people, didn't he? Let's see if he did it. Let's look at John 8 and 30. Let's see if he preached righteousness in, in front of the people. He said, in a minute to the great congregation. Let's see if he did it. We'll go, Lord willing, we'll go to three examples. Let me see if John 8 will do it for me. Look at verse 20. He said, these words spake Yahshua in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him for his hour was not yet come. So if he preaching righteousness in the temple, ain't he in front of the people? And that means he said he didn't hold back his lips. Because you know what refrain means, right? That means to hold back. He ain't hold back nothing. He said, then said Yahshua again unto them, I go my way and you shall seek me and you shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he said, whether I go, you cannot come. He said unto them, you are from beneath and I'm from above. You are of this world. I'm not of this world. See, now you need to clear. What is he sitting here telling them if he's telling them they from beneath and he from above? What he just told them? No, he just told them, y'all carnal, I'm spiritual. That's what he just told them, didn't he? So y'all need to look at this. Are y'all from beneath or y'all from above? Because John told you greater is he that is, that is in you than he that's in the world. Because he that's in the world, what are they? They carnal minded, which is enmity with God. He said the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So that means what you're going to have to do with your carnal mind? What you're going to have to do with it? You're going to have to kill it. Because the carnal mind and the spiritual mind can't exist in the same place. The man saying they're enmity against one another. The law is spiritual. The man say the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It's the same words he said going to cleanse you, ain't it? This is the only way you're going to be drawn out of the water if you take in the word to make it quicken you. This is the only way you're going to be able to be drawn out of the water. But instead, y'all don't want to be drawn out of the water. You want to be drawn out of the water, but you still want to be carnal at the same time. That's what I meant to tell you. That's what I'm talking about when even though Buddy was cussing me out, that it didn't pop in my mind to cuss him out because I had done killed that mind long before I ever met him. Long before I ever met him. That's why it's not going to rise up. Because I done killed that already. That's been tossed to the side. Not just covered it up and hid and think I overcame it and it's still there. I got rid of it. You know what I'm talking about? See, that's what hinders a lot of people though. Don't just try to think something you done, oh, I got rid of it, but really you just dug a hole. You know, like dogs like to do in the backyard. Take a the poop, then cover it up. But the poop, okay, I mean, I've seen a couple dogs do it. I think I've seen a couple dogs do it. No, I think I have. These were weird dogs, though. No, I mean, the niggas just dig holes yeah. and poop in the, in the hole. Yeah, you know, digging up holes in the backyard, you will. Not I ain't saying that it ain't poop everywhere, but Fat Boy has some dogs. Niggas just dig some holes and, hey, they just happen to be over there. They have poop on it, and they realize there's poop in it. They just go in the cover. You know what I'm talking about? Because Fat Boy has some killers. They ain't like, after a couple of them got tired of Messing in the poop. Even though dogs eat poop, I don't know why they like to eat poop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dogs like to eat poop. That's why, you know what I'm saying? That's why the book said dog returneth to his vomit. 
You don't talk about you return it to your sin. You don't talk about, but you got to look at this here though. Regardless of who does it, you don't talk about you pooping the hole. Ain't the poop still there? The filth still there? You just covered it up. You don't talk about. Don't cover it up. Toss it out. Guess what? You don't just take none of Leah's uh, pampers and just be like, I'm just gonna hide it somewhere. You know what I'm talking about? Because after a while, you're gonna walk in here and your face gonna do what? You gotta you get that out the door. This is filth. I gotta remove it. You know what I'm talking about? So look at the stuff that you got in your heart that's defiling you and remove it. Just get rid of it. Don't cover it up. What else you say? What we got here? Verse 24. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. If you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Because see, he believed in the Father. And he rose him from the grave. He drew him out of the water. Because remember, he told you, I, he said, all ye prisoners of hope. He said, by the blood of the covenant. Hold on, look at Zechariah 9. I don't want him to quote me. Because my words can't jump up there. Specifically on what he said. Zechariah 9 and 10. Zechariah 9 and 11, I think. 9 and 11. Zechariah 9 and He said, As for thee, by the blood of the covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein, wherein is no water. Man said, I sent you up out of the grave where there was no water. He said, You prisoners of hope. By the blood of the Messiah. He said, I sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where there was. I freed you from that bondage. Remember how we read in that Hebrews 2, he came to free you from bondage. He said, There wasn't no water from where you was at. He said, By the blood of this man, I sent forth free. By the blood of the covenant. Remember what he said in Matthew. This is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for the many for the remission of sins. And that's what he said. Matthew 26, 28, that's what he said. And we had already seen. Look at it. Let me find the verse he is here with Paul. So y'all just think this stuff to make sure so y'all see this stuff lying on up. Look at 2 Corinthians. I think that's what it is. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It might not be here. Oh, second, uh, it's actually Galatians 5. Verse 1. Going right back to what we looked at in Judges. And the other thing. Galatians 5 and 1. He says, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith the Messiah has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Some of y'all steady want to be tangled with the yoke of sin and be directed by that. Look at Ephesians 4 and 1. That's what you want to do. Instead of walking in the freedom of life. Ain't going to call nobody the name. You'd be talking about, I might as well hide in the closet because I can't do nothing. Don't be looking about what you can't do. Didn't the man just say you were free? Did he say you were free? Man came to set you free. So get free. You ever heard that Lauren Hill song, end of that song, Peace of Mind, She Steady? He said, like, get free. Get free. The Messiah came to get you free. Get free. Stop holding on to stuff and get free. He said, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you. That walk worthy of the vocation where if you're called. This man just called you prisoners of hope in Zechariah, didn't he? Go back to Zechariah 11. I mean Zechariah 9 and 11. Look what he said here in verse 12. We just read it. He said he sent forth your prisoners out of the pit where there was no water. So those who were in bondage of sin, he said there wasn't no life there. He said, but by the blood of this man, I came to set you free. He said, turn ye to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Who is the stronghold? Who is the stronghold? Hold on now. Let me see what it said. I think the second Corinthians I want. Y'all give me a second. See that's really what I want. This is second Corinthians 4. Uh, Connell, you remember that verse when you say taking down a stronghold? You remember that? You know y'all remember that was that? You know what I'm talking about? I can't remember where it's at. That really grinds my gears right now. That's slipping my mind. It ain't right there. No, nevertheless. He said we're tearing down the strongholds. Well, you need to turn to the stronghold. You need to turn to the Lord. Because this man said you're a prisoner of hope. He said, even today I declare that I render unto you double. So when Paul said he was a prisoner of the Lord, ain't he a prisoner of hope? Which means he, and if what is hope? Hope is faith, right? That means he a prisoner of the water, didn't it? Because he wanted to be drawn out of the water. A lot of y'all don't want to be a prisoner of hope. A lot of y'all don't want to be a prisoner of the word. You don't want to be a prisoner of the Lord. You still want to be a prisoner to the flesh and to the world to do what you want to do. And still say you're walking with the Lord. It ain't going to work. Go back to John 8. We got to show you this man's not holding back his lips in the congregation. Yeah. Keep 
Go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. That's what I want. I appreciate that. Mm hmm. I got it, Barry. I appreciate that. 2 Corinthians 2 and 4. I thought that might have been. We wasn't over that way. I wasn't 100% sure. And we just wanted to roll for time's sake. Listen to what he said. I want you to look at verse 1, though. Because I'm sitting here saying, I want you to understand what he's saying now. Look at verse 1. He said, Now I, Paul, be myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of the Messiah, who in the presence and base among you, but being absent and bored, bold towards you. He said, He beseeching you by the gentleness and humbleness of the Lord. He said, Because he said, When I'm in presence of y'all, I lower myself. He said, But I've come strong when I'm absent. He said, But I beseech you that you may not be bold when I'm present with that confidence, where if I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So you know, you know what he's telling you right here? He said, just because we in this flesh don't mean that we, we war according to it. We don't operate and conduct ourselves according to this flesh, even though we in this flesh. That go back to being able to control your mind, being able to control your doings, being in the world, but not of the world, being able to take this man yoke upon you and restrict yourself. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. He said, you need to turn to that stronghold. Because remember this here, what everybody loves to scream, I can do all things through the Messiah who strengthened me, ain't it? Well, if this man strengthened you in the inward man according to the word, why you can't control your mind? Why you can't stand on the word? Why you can't obey? Why you seeking after stuff you ain't got no business? Why is you making league with the inhabitants of the land when the man told you not to do it? He said, why have you done this thing? Why have you not obeyed my voice? Why have you done it? That's what he asked you. Why have you done it? Nevertheless, go back to John 8. Verse 24. He said, I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am he. You shall die in your sins. Then they said unto him, Who art thou? And Yahshua said unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. Listen to what he said. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak of the to the world those things which I have heard of him. Sound like he ain't reflaining his lips, is it? He said, I got many things to say to you. And everything he gonna give me to say, I'm gonna say it. And y'all gonna hear. Ain't that what they just told him? I ain't going to hold back my mind. Let's see. Look at Matthew 7. Let's see if he spoke righteousness in front of the great congregation. Matthew 7 by 24. Oh, not 24, but 28. Matter of fact, before we do that, look at Matthew 5 and 1. Then we go down. Matthew 5 and 1, then Matthew 7 28. And saying, seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain where he was set. And his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So let's go over there. We just had to hear that. Because some of y'all are not humble in spirit. That's why you're not going to get the kingdom of heaven. You need to humble your spirit and be poor in spirit, but rich in faith, so you can get the kingdom of heaven. Look what he said when he got finished preaching all the things he preached to these people. And it came to pass when Yahshua had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. For he had taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. Sound like he spoke in the midst of the great congregation, did it not, Lord? He spoke right in front of the people. But he said he didn't refrain his lips. Let's go look at, uh, is it Luke that I want? Let's see if it's Luke. Let's see if it's Luke where he told him that. Come on, this, this page and that's what kind of throws me off here. Mm. Uh, let's go to John instead. John about 18. About verse 20 or 19, John 18 and 19. He said, Then the high priest then asked Yahshua of his disciples and of his doctrine. Yahshua answered them, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple and whither the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Man, so, so that means he ain't said nothing in secret. He ain't held back nothing, did it? He ain't held back nothing. Did it? And he said, I spoke openly to all y'all in the midst of the great congregation. Because if he in the temple and the synagogue, sound like he's speaking to everybody. In it. And who was the great congregation? Huh? Who the great congregation? Don't none of y'all know who the great congregation is? Anybody? Who? 
Yisrael. That's who the congregation of Yahweh. He was fucked. He fuck right. He said, "I just went to the." You remember? He said, "I'm sent to the lost sheep of who? House of Israel." So he spoke in the midst of the great congregation. Go back to Psalm four, so we can get that. Listen, what else he said in verse ten? He said, "I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart." I have declared thy faithfulness and salvation. I have not concealed thy love and kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Man, say he has not hid any of these things. Let's look at John 17. Because we already know. Didn't he tell him he would raise? He said he that believed on him and live in him. He said he's the resurrection and the life, right? And he that liveth and believe in him shall never taste death. Is that not the love and kindness of God and the righteousness of God? Because that's the faith of God. That's John 11, 25, 26, right? So living and believing in him, is that not the righteousness of God? Did he conceal it? Then he said, uh, the love and kindness of God, which is everlasting life. He didn't conceal that. Look at John 17. Let's see if he showed it to his disciples. Let's see what he told them. John 17 by verse 6. He said, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gave them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. So that means he said he let them know everything then. That what the things you gave me, I gave to them. We're going to show you that in another spot in a second. He said, for I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they, they, have, they have believed that thou didst send me. So now he's sitting here saying he didn't, he didn't, because he said if he gave him the word, that means he showed him that love and kindness and that righteousness, did not. Remember when we dealt with him manifesting the name of Yah? You remember that? What, you remember that? Mm -hmm. Remember when we dealt with him manifesting the name of God to his brethren? In Exodus 34, showing forth the mercy and all this shit, uh, uh, all these things. The manifesting the mercy, the forgiving of sins. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? So that's doing that. That means he wasn't concealing the righteousness of God, was it? Or his love and kindness. The man came to show you. He, your God came to redeem you for death. Because he said God so loved the world. He did what? He gave his only begotten son. Look at John 15. Make it verse 9. That's all. We're, we're going to wrap this up right now. Let me check Psalm 40 one more time. Make sure we didn't do nothing now. Y'all hold that John 15. Give me one second. Yep, 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 that's good enough for me. John 15 to 10. Well, verse 9, I'm sorry. He says, As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. It's the only way you're going to be able to abide. You're not going to be able to abide in God. You're not obeying him. You're just not going to be able to do it. And he's not going to love you because you don't love him. And there's no way you're going to be drawn out of the water as the son was drawn out of the water. Because he believed and he loved his father and he trusted in his father and he brought him back from death and he quickened him by his spirit. That's the only way you're going to be drawn out of the water. Oh, it's one more thing. I got to let you hit my mind. We've been hit. It. Verse 13. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay his life down for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Now, what did, he, what did Abraham do to be considered a friend? We read it earlier. What did he do to be considered a friend? He believed God and he worked the works of God, didn't he? So guess what? That's why you're not a friend of God, because you don't believe him. You're not working his works. That man say you his, you his friend if you do what he tell you to do. Because if you do what he tell you to do, that means you believe what he told you to do then. So if you don't believe what he told you, you ain't his friend. It's simple as that. The man didn't tell you that. He say, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant know not what his Lord do. But I've called you friends. For all things that I've heard of my father, I've made known unto you. And what he said? He say, everything that has been known unto me, I let, I let you know it. So does that mean he ain't concealing the righteousness and the love and kindness of God right now? Because what I know, what I heard of my father, I'm letting it known to you. So let's go right, right back to this. Look at it. One thing. Remember we dealt with, look at 1 John 3 and 8. Remember what we dealt with, starting off with, that this man came to deliver us from the bondage of sin and then slew sin. Remember how we read that in Exodus 2? 1 John 3 and 8. You know, let these niggas tell it. I'm just coming up with stuff on my own. I thank the Lord for it. First John 3 and 8. He that commits sin is of the devil. And sin is bondage, right? He said he that commits sin is the servant of sin. He came that Egyptian and said all that was showing forth that because he was showing he was a deliverer. He said, and the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Ain't that's what he sought Moses for to destroy the works of Pharaoh? To destroy the works of sin. 
The sword of works of bondage, delivering the people from bondage to Egypt. Man just sat here and showed you. I manifested my son for the same purpose. To destroy the works of Pharaoh. To destroy the works of bondage and sin. To slay it. To slay it. He that in whosoever is born of God do not commit sin. For his seed remain in him and he cannot sin because he is born of God. John 20 and 31 please. John 20 and 31. And it says, But these are written that you might believe that Yahshua is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. See, by believing, you might get to be drawn out of the waters he was. I say, Blessed be the Father in the name of Yahshua for his word. Y'all understood all that? Everybody understood all this? 